Well, there he is, the four Broncos Memorial Trophy winner of the Regina Pats, Sam Steele, 24 points in the playoffs to lead his team after that incredible 131 to lead all WHLers in the regular year. Connor Hobbs, like in the regular season, leading defenseman in scoring in the playoffs with 19 points, but he's been held off the score sheet in each of the last three. And he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ethan Bear. This is a big return for the Thunderbirds on their blue line. Ethan didn't play the last three in the Western Championship with Kelowna, but he's back tonight as the Thunderbirds and Pats go toe-to-toe -to -toe for the WHL Championship. Regina want to be. Brent Center sold out for game one in a couple of minutes. Only took about five for game two tomorrow night as we welcome an 11 machinery WHL on Shaw and Access and Bobby Gloves WHL Central. I'm Andy Neal. Happy Cinco de Mayo. It's no Quattro, but no matter what day it is, the Regina Pats are back in the WHL Championship Series for the first time since they wore Cooper all pants in 1984. Pats remember were the best team in the WHL in the regular season, yet they survived a big scare in the second round, battling back 3-1 down against the Swiftburn Broncos to win it in seven games, and they almost win seven again against Lethbridge in the Eastern Conference Championship, winning three straight games to win the conference title in six and advance to the Edge and Out Cup Championship Series. Meanwhile, for the Seattle Thunderbirds, second year in a row as the Western Conference champs, and they roared out the gates in the playoffs by winning their first eight games, sweeping Tri-City and Everett, and they needed six to get past the Kelowna Rockets for the second straight year in the Western Conference Championship Series, and the Thunderbirds are in position again to give Seattle its first WHL championship. They are ready to go here in the Saskatchewan capital, and they are two upstairs, Rita Labardius and Kevin Sawyer. Gentlemen. Andy, thank you so much. This is what it's all about, my friend. And here in Regina, they haven't experienced it in 33 years. But one reason you have an opportunity to dance at this time of the season is with premier players. And he was named the Player of the Year, Sam Steele. Well, what a season he had. 50 goal scorer, led all players with 131 points. And he leads his team in the playoffs with eight goals and 24 points. And this is a guy that can be dangerous all over the ice. And he does what all good goal scorers do. That's get to the middle. And look what he does there. He's not afraid to play in traffic. And perhaps the only thing that overshadows Sam Steele's skill is his desire to win. He's a true leader. He's not the most vocal guy, but he leads by example. It's a kid that's willing to pay the price to win. 
You also don't make it to round four without some great playoff performances, i.e. Austin Wagner, the fourth round pick of the Los Angeles Kings, is fast and 14 times he has turned on the red light. L leads his team and he's second in the Western League in the postseason in goals, but look at how he goes from zero to 60. His change of speed makes him so hard to defend, but speed is what we talk about with Wagner. Look at him pour on the nitrous oxide. He wins foot races all over the ice, and to me, that's what separates him is he creates time and space for himself, and he's got a nice skill set to back that up. Look at the foot race he wins there against Brendan Bunnell. He's a guy that can skate himself, but again, 30 goals in the regular season and 14 in the postseason, a real big piece of the puzzle here in Regina. While it's somewhat foreign for the home side as they've just made their way on the ice, you can tell it's not the case for the Western Conference champions from Seattle. They were in the league championship series one year ago, lost in a difficult five-game series to the Brandon Wheat Kings. They're led by the young man who I think is the most dynamic player, not only in this league, but maybe in the entire country, Matthew Barzell. Well, I would agree with you, and all you have to do is watch him in a couple of shifts, and you would agree too at home. And this is a guy that is a puck possession guy. And he doesn't need much time and space to make things happen, but when he gets it, well, he is lethal, and maybe nobody better at creating separation. Look at him here, one little move, and he buys himself 20 feet of space in 41 games in the regular season, 10 goals, 79 points. That's just under two points a game. He finds seams. He's such a passer. We're going to break the team man's ankles there with his skill with the puck on the stick. He's lights out good. On Wednesday, Ethan Bear from nearby Ochapaways was named the defenseman of the year. We wondered if he'd be able to play he suffered a hand injury in game three versus Kelowna, but he's back. He's back, and what a huge addition. He had 28 goals and 70 points in the regular season. That was second among all demon. He's scoring at about one and a half points per game in 11 games. He's got 16 points, but how about his shot? He's got an absolute bazooka, but it's not just his offense. He has worked on his 200-foot game. How about that? Taking care of his own end. It's things like that that got him the team end of the year award. Knows when to step up to create offense and Boy, oh boy, are they happy to have him back. 6,484 strong. They are ready. The teams are ready. Seattle looking for its first ever championship. Regina's last title came in the year 1980. It promises to be a gem, and we're delighted to have an opportunity on Shaw Access, and for those of you in the United States watching on this TV. The national anthems are on their way next. Two-time Western Canadian Music Award winner, and also Juno Award-winning recording artist, Jack Semple, in the singing of the American and Canadian national anthems. So proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous night, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming.
your eyes The, the true door is strong and free From far and wide Oh, Canada We stand on guard for me God, keep our land Glorious and free Oh, Canada We stand on guard for thee Oh, Canada We stand on guard The battle for the Edge and Out Cup and a trip to the Memorial Cup in Windsor begins tonight. John Paddock, the architect, longtime hockey man, coach, and general manager, guiding the Pats to a team record 52 wins, 112 points, and playoff wins over Lethbridge, Swift Current, and Calgary. The starting goaltenders, and he has been a story, just turned 17 on the 9th of March. From Calgary, Carl Stankowski, he played only seven regular season games behind starter Ryland Tope, but he's gone the whole way 12-2. and two. At the other end, the recently turned 20-year-old from Winnipeg, Tyler Brown. 9.26 is the save percentage so far in the playoffs, and he was crucial in their comeback against Swift Current in round two, and the same could be said for round three, a six-game triumph or for a very game Leftridge Hurricanes. And here we go. Delighted to have you with us, no matter where you are looking on tonight. Steele backhands it in. Stankowski will take no chances as Leadall bumps with him. <laughs> Levitt Machinery's WHL on Shaw is brought to you by Levitt Machinery, online at levittmachinery.com. Well, what a job Dawson Liedahl has done throughout the course of the regular season and playoffs, and it shouldn't be surprising anybody to see Liedahl and the Pats getting to Stankowski early. You know they're going to want to test the young guy in the, the biggest stage in the Western Hockey League, and we've already seen bodies get to the net early. Memories, really, of Dan Blackburn, who helped the Kootenai Ice as a 16-year-old goalie to the 2000 Western Hockey League Championship. It does not happen often. By the way, Seattle without their top playoff points performer in Keegan Kolazar, whose hit carries with it a one-game suspension from Game 6 against Cologne in the Western Conference Championship. This is two-time World Junior star for Canada, Matthew Barzell. Otten Bright for Grot, no Kolazar on that line. Donovan Niles, who has had a wonderful postseason, taking Kolazar's place to begin. Austin Strand, he's from Calgary, started the year in Red Deer. Brooks to Connor Hobbs. Tishka tries to break it up at center, and here's Wagner. His pass goes off the skate of Finnish youngster Sammy Moylanen. Tishka. Avoids the check of Philip All. Enser plays it on the boards and makes the connection with Nolan Volkin. One of several returning members from last year's league finals. Strand was not part of the group. He pinches in and now back comes for Johnny in transition. It's Brooks with Hobbs and Wagner. Hobbs, good defensive work. Wagner and the first quality save of the series belongs to Stan Kowski. Well, the first best chance comes from the Regina Pats on a three-on-two. Uh, Wagner on this right side of the ice, awfully close to going offside. Good job by DeLang, and they don't get the wood on the shot that they want to. Hobbs bobbles it, but look at the save. Stankowski makes the save, and the key...
points, had eight points in the last three wins versus Lethbridge. A block shot by Matthew Wedman. Wedman for Adams, the Regina product, nearly scores the series opening goal. Tyler Adams, a quality chance, and didn't miss by much. Scholler puts it out and Otten Bright handles in his own zone the number one defensive pair for Seattle. Bear and Otten Bright. Cleared in, Scholler to handle. Paired with 17-year-old Jonathan Smart as Bishop playing up front. Spent a lot of time on defense, throws a good hit. Number three for the Thunderbirds. Seattle doing a little bit of line shuffling. Nothing that they're strangers to as they've had a lot of adversity injury-wise throughout the course of the season. That Connor Walchuk doing a real good job shuffling his lines to come up with good combinations. Nick Henry who scored a big goal in game six versus Lethbridge to Steele. Tishka felt that. Steele trying to direct it in front. Off of Niles it goes and now Niles bumps into Steele. Stays with it. Henry! A quality chance and he shoveled the one-timer wide. Oh, this building is buzzing. Steel backhand try for the 21-year-old leadall, and Hamilak sends Enser away, one of the two co-captains, along with Barzell. Sabrowski off the boards, and out it goes. And it's Strand to Barzell. Has points in 16 straight games going back to the end of the regular season. Totaling for 32. He is on fire. Here he comes off Zabrowski, the Rangers third rounder and to an open wing. Niles in drop with Barzell. Strand a wrist shot and Tyler Brown hangs on to that. Well, these teams going back and forth chance for chance. You can feel the emotions in the building early but a Great job down low. Look at Stam Steele right there. A backhand pass, and he's got some wood on that right on the button. All is able to get that shot onto the net cleanly, but a real nice play down low by Steele. And look at it, how these two teams match up. For me, the story, especially teams, look how lethal that power play for Seattle has been. 19 for 53. They're just under 36%. That will be a key. And an important cog in the wheel to beat an excellent Kelowna team. They operated at 33% in the Western Conference Championship Final. Their penalty kill wasn't too bad either here in the postseason. Their penalty kills just over 81%. Ryan Gropp, another New York Ranger hopeful. Signed by the Rangers. In fact, the second round pick in 2015. Niles Gropp bumped along the boards is it's Brooks right now against Barzell's line. We'll keep an eye on that matchup as the series goes on. Strand with Reese Harsh. Strand plays it for Niles. Tapped away from him and Brooks sends it to Wagner who shoots it in and Stankowski juggles it. Between the benches, we know who to find. Double D or the Moose, Darren Dupont. All right, thanks, Pete. Well, Ethan Bear, you mentioned him off the top. We've seen him already in this first period. It was a question mark whether or not he'd be able to play in this series after missing the final three games of the Western Conference Championship. He took those pregame skates, wasn't able to play, but he was a full participant Thursday. Looked pretty good in their practice here in Regina. He was a full participant in their game day skate this morning. He took the first uh, shift of the hockey game with Reese Harsh, but promptly right back with Turner Ottenbright for the second, so we'll monitor how much he plays tonight. Connor Hobbs, a backhander from the defenseman, a fifth round pick of the Washington Capitals who led all Western Hockey League Blue Liners in scoring during the regular season with 85 points and has 19 more through three rounds of the playoffs. Hobbs had three points in round three against Lethbridge. All of them came in game four, a goal and two assists. He went five games pointless. They'll look for him to be a little bit more consistent showing up on the score sheet. And sir, in a battle with Slobosian. Slobosian's wrist shot, that test. Stankowski only goes about 5'9", in this day and age, small for a goalie. But they talk about his great hockey IQ and his athleticism and poise. You can't do what he's done this spring without all of that. Answer. Hits the line, finds Vulcan, a wrist shot, and Brown, bit of a quick whistle. We talk about how important goaltending is and what a job this Carl Stankowski has done. The 16-year-old 
played in Anaheim last year for the Junior Ducks. And he's a guy that played in only seven regular season games. He's only lost once, including playoffs in regulation time. You look at the stats here, round one, and their sweep to Tri-Cities. Great numbers, 9-2-2. They dipped against Everett. You look at his save percentage at 8-8-8. And that were in times where he wasn't necessarily fantastic. His team was. And there's other times, for example, game three in Kelowna last series, where he stole a game for his team. So he's been there. The relationship between him and the players looking out for each other has been excellent. Made 34 saves in that triumph in game three. Wedman puts on the brakes, centers it in front, loose in the crease before Brown dives on it. We talk about how the lines have been juggled and Connor Walchuk has had to be creative. This line with Wedman and Tyler Adams has had two great quality opportunities. One came off of a rush in their first shift of the game and another one in tight paying the price. And Tyler Adams, the hometown kid from Regina, had a shot on that earlier, almost capitalized on another. Came over in a deal from Swift Kern in October that sent Mackenzie White in the other direction. And Russ Farwell had a lot of good things to say about Adams today. Barzell against Steele this time. Ottenbright pinches, sharp angle shot that seemed to surprise Brown a little bit. Thought there might be a bit of a feeling out process. There really hasn't been one. Steele to the on-rushing Josh Mahura, third round pick of the Anaheim Ducks, who has gotten stronger and stronger as this spring is continued. He's got a goal in each of his last two games here in the postseason. Brock will flip it out of danger. Barzell in hot pursuit before Mahura taps it back in. Played nearly six minutes of game number one. Niles collides with Steele and Ottenbright to Strand off of Niles at center ice and Zabrowski finds Brooks who avoids a hit from the big defender Strand. And speaking of hits there's been no shortage of those earlier in this series or earlier in this early in this game by the way it doesn't seem like either team is taking their time getting to know each other. Well many of us expect and we never really know a long series. Steve Konowalczyk has his team back in the league championship affair for a second straight year. And we talked to Steve earlier today about his line matchups and what he anticipates Regina will throw at that top line of Grot, Kolasar, and Bar. Barzell, obviously, Kolasar's out tonight, and he didn't really seem to care too much, did he? He just figures out we've got depth. We've used our depth throughout the course of the season. We're going to put our guys out and stick to what we do and pay less attention to what they're going to do. Vulcan shovels it in on the ice with the impressive rookie from Finland, Moylinen, and Enser. Brooks tracks it down, a rolling puck. Now he'll backhand it into the corner where Tishka takes over. His name could very likely be called in the upcoming NHL draft in Chicago. Good skater, and the puck was rolling on him as he sent it on target. Well, Tishka's a guy to me that has really benefited from playing 18 playoff games last season. He had some injury problems, only 54 games played this year, and he hasn't really gotten back to the level that possibly he could have that injury playing a little bit of a factor mentally in his head, yet we're talking about a highly skilled defenseman. He's ranked 41st among Central Scouting at 25 points in the regular season. And the young Jared Tishka. Rated number 41 in the final rankings by NHL Central Scouting. Has five points, including one goal so far in the postseason. Reese Harsh, the rookie, off the boards and forces shoulder back deep. The Winnipegger to Jeff DeWitt, who scored some big goals for Regina. Bishop. Knocked down by Slobosian, and here's Robbie Holmes. In behind the net, Harsh wins the race, but on top of him, both DeWitt and Holmes. DeWitt, right through the crease. Sergei Zabrowski, not in a position to shoot it, plays it down low into the corner for DeWitt. Slobosian on the cycle. Wyatt Slobosian, backhand try, hits big Aaron Hyman, the former Calgary hitman. Lead all tries to jam it, blocked by Alexander True. 
Well, you mentioned Jeff Duet earlier, er, Pete, and, and he's got four goals in, in the postseason. Three of them came in that third round series against Lethbridge Hurricanes. He came over, of course, in that blockbuster with Mahura in exchange for Zablocki and a few first round picks. But he's another guy, that depth guy that you need to be good. And I feel that his game has certainly grown through the course of these playoffs. Of course, he got the game winning goal in game six in Lethbridge midway through the third period. He's been good and you get the sense that he's only getting better goal and an assist in the clincher as four goals in the playoffs scored only nine during the course of the regular season here's Grop wheeling in to the backhand and it went off Mahura's stick wide here's a little display of skill by the Ranger pick Ryan Grop who had 84 points during the course of the regular season Zabrowski pestered by Barzell whose two-way game has really grown this year. The Islander first rounder. A couple of games in the National Hockey League, getting a taste and being a key player in the, for Team Canada and the World Juniors probably doesn't help that. His overall game, I agree, has certainly grown. Teams making changes, eight and a half minutes in. As Ottenbright surveys the situation, he's from nearby Yorkton, about two hours down the road. Misses Moylanen, and Brown handles it behind the net. To the speedster Wagner against Tishka. Tishka upends him. Wagner with 14 goals already in the playoffs. Only Reed Gardner of Kelowna has more. Moylanen directs it, and Brown not taking any chances. It's Vulcan into it with Hobbs. Maybe one of the biggest biggest challenges that the Pats are going to face is this decor for Seattle. And what a great job Tishka does against Wagner. Pops the puck, has good body position, and negates any further offensive chance from the speedster. Seattle with a slight 5-3 edge in shots. Enser back out with Vulcan and Moylinen from Sipu in Finland. Helped the Finns to the world under 18 gold medal in 2016 in Grand Forks. Vulcan off his stick to wit takes a solid jolt from Adams before Vulcan clears it in. Connor Hobbs, an outlet, finds DeWitt. And Ottenbright took a run at him but missed. DeWitt stays with it, Pat's changing on the go. As Adams shovels it out to center, only to have Jonathan Smart, who started the year in Kelowna, to send it behind the net. How about the physical game from the Thunderbirds? Haven't turned down an opportunity to finish a check yet that I've seen. Wagner with a little space to fill a ball. Olin Brooks back to all. He shot it wide. Excellent chance for the Ottawa pick. Now Wedman at the other end, blocked by Scholler. Wedman from a sharp angle deflects wide. Niles off the bench. Wanted Barzell, and All knocks it out of midair to Brooks, and now Wagner again. Chips and chases to himself. Nobody does it better than him in that department. Barzell backhands it to an open wing, and Zabrowski rims it behind the net. Barzell takes over. He had 69 assists and only played 41 games. Tied up by Leadall. Look at this battle. Leadall wins it. Off a stick and out of play. Philip Ball couldn't find the back of the net. Still looking for goal number one.
coach John Paddock. And John, when you're playing a team in the Western Conference like Seattle, who you only see once a year, how much of a feeling out process do you expect in this series? Uh, I don't think there's a lot. I think teams know about each other, teams, how they play. I don't think it's really a feeling out this, uh, today. I think it's pretty quick pace. After the sweep of Calgary, you've lost the, the most re recent two game ones. You played well in those games, but how important to get off to a good start in this series? Well, it's important, absolutely, uh, to uh, to get off to a good start. But I think that, you know, the opposition has a say in it. And we, we think we can have played better in those games, but the opposition has a say, and they're, they're good teams we played. John, thank you. Thank you. Pete? We talk about getting off to good starts, how about good finishes? This wasn't a great start for the Pats. Down 3-0 early in game six against Lethbridge. They claw their way back in, and it's 5-4 at this time when Connor Hobbs pops the net off the moorings, and that gives Tyler Wong two back-to-back -back penalty shots, isn't able to convert. Regina adds an empty netter for a 7-4 game six Eastern Conference championship win. Another sellout here the Brand Center, hockey in May and Regina, for the first time since 1984. And people in this town really don't want to be reminded about how that series went. All versus Strand of Vulcan, the Edmonton product. Moylinen with Tishka. Moylinen waits, and Brown shut him down. What a fantastic job by Brown here. He shows composure. Moy Lennon is looking to, to pass this puck. He's representing pass for me, but a good job by Hobbs taking the pass. Look at that long stick in the passing lane, and then Brown just commits to the shot when he knows. Brown very composed. Maybe at times hasn't received the credit he deserves. Thanks in no short part to a team that scored 353 goals during the course of the regular season as 68 more in 17 postseason affairs. They only allowed 211, which was the sixth least in the league as well, so they can score, but pretty good at keeping out of the net as well. Drop. Comes away with it. Back to the line and Hyman with Ottenbright, Turner Ottenbright, down low for Donovan Niles, who has 18 postseason points already. I thought he was excellent in last year's league final as well. Lead off with Steele as they hit the line. And Henry, Henry got off the schneid with a key goal in game six. Steele spinning the wraparound, went right through the crease, Henry! teed it up but it went off the heel of his stick in the slot area fantastic job by Steele down low he's had a couple of dangerous opportunities from below the goal line on wraparounds and passes Barzell towards Vulcan with Moy Lennon who had 43 points during the regular season and just turned 18 in the month of January. Has he ever come off the ice? He has been all over the place Moy Lennon on the body creating opportunities offensively I like his start First time I've seen him in person. He gets a check mark for me early. Harrison, the veteran defenseman. With some help and support by Slobosian, but Enser is there. So is Vulcan, and Enser comes away with it to Moy Lennon. Down low wants Vulcan and Hobbs with a solid shoulder on Vulcan as he makes his way back to the Seattle bench. Ethan Bear, and nowhere near 100%, but playing anyway. Adams off the bench. A lot of size in the forward ranks for both teams, but the Thunderbirds, especially in those bottom two groups. And that's a big identity trait for the Thunderbirds' size on the back end as well. Strand and Wagner. Not a lot to choose from early in game one. Can only hope it's like this for about, I don't know, seven and maybe some overtimes <laughs> mixed in. Both teams certainly playing on both ends of the ice and showing why they're in the league final. Alexander True from Copenhagen in Denmark. 
deflects it in on it again. Brown will hang on. We've had some carbon copy looks at some down low chances from Stam Steele. We showed it in the open and how good he is and how dangerous he is. And to me, it's because he's willing to take the weight of its defender, but he's such a good skater to get a step on him. And there you see it on the back. that with intention. Steele with five points in round three versus Lethbridge. At ten in the opening round, a four-game sweep of Calgary. His five points came in games three or four, five, and six. He's in a battle now with Barzell, Niles, Ottenbright. His wrist shot wide of the target. And Leadall sends it out to center. Hyman to Ottenbright, who attended the New York Ranger camp as a free agent in the fall. His game has grown immensely. Oh, understatement of the night, the 12th rounder from the Saskatoon Blades. It's been real fun to watch him develop. When he showed up as a 17-year-old, he was okay, and he's a lot better than okay now for me. Real good defender. Dangerous one hopper to Brown. Oh, another scuffle after a stoppage. Darren? Carvel Stankowski continues to get things done in goal for the Seattle Thunderbirds. Of course, he came in with the injury to 20-year-old netminder Rylan Toth, who has not appeared even in the lineup throughout these playoffs for the Seattle Thunderbirds. Now, word was that he was getting ready and healthy to play, but he hasn't been on the ice. He was a part of the skate this morning by himself. He came on at the very end, but right now they're being pretty cautious and pretty quiet when it comes to the status of their 20-year-old netminder, and for the time being, it's the youngster getting the job done. Philip All stood up effectively at center by Tishka, who's off to a good start in game one. Chase Harrison, plus 52 during the regular season. Harrison had a 16-game point streak, 21 points in that span. It's a guy that's known more for his defense. Brooks to Wagner with All. Harrison's shot goes off the stick of the goalie Stankowski, now Brooks to the front of the net, stopped by Stankowski, in behind him, Brooks jams away at it, to Hobbs, can he keep it in? Yes, Connor Hobbs, his long drive, and Stankowski stopped that too. Stankowski, stand on your head, Kowski, I've heard the Nick game thrown around a couple of times, and I'll tell you, this kid is showing such poise, he's under attack, and he's had some wraps and some Guys take the puck to the net. Here's one from Adam Brooks, and look at him again. He makes the save, and he puts the rebound into a safe area. In panic mode a little bit. Adam Brooks. 250 points in the last two seasons. The captain of the Pats nearly strikes first. 250 points in 138 games. Unbelievable. He's from Winnipeg, a fourth round pick of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Wyatt Slobosian. His line out there against True, Wedman, and Adams. Ottenbright to Matt Wedman off the stick of Scholler. Smart chops at it. He hit Wedman with it. On the puck is Adams to Harsh. His shot hit a body. Caroms to an open wing and cleared out. Barzell turns back. Loves to have it on his stick. Nobody any better with it. Barzell cruises in. Puts on the brakes to Strand. Wrist shot. Hit a leg in front. Looked like it was Scholler. Sobrovsky to the line. Not out. Held in. Niles wants Barzell loose in front of the net. Lead all there to clear it out of harm's way and did so with plenty of poise. Lead all has been a huge pickup from Everett. Came over in the offseason. 35 goals during the regular campaign, 11 more in the playoffs. So he had 48 games last year with Everett, 12 goals, 
the shackles are off, you could say, coming to Regina, and he really gets a chance to show what he is all about offensively. Starring for Regina, a kid from Saskatoon. Brooks held up effectively by Vulcan, and here comes Strand in transition. Good pass to Enser. Scott Enser waiting. Toe save rebound. Goes off Roy Lennon and just went wide of the open side. Great chance for the visitors. What patience on that release. He looks like a natural goal scorer out waiting Hobbs defensively. Brooks reverses in his own zone to all. For Hobbs, has Wagner. Wagner with Brooks. Brooks, Rod, rebound. Oh my goodness! How does Stan Kelsky keep that out? Did we just see what we just saw? What an opportunity for the Pats. And just when you think that Carl Stankowski is beat, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's beat desperation and he keeps that puck out with the heel of his check his birth certificate turn 17 on March the 9th Carl Stankowski and look at his face there just another day at the office He's got the makeup to be a darn good goaltender. You gotta be calm and you have to have good emotional control, but wow. In a time where you could understand a 16-year-old to be a little bit nervous or shaky, he's showing no signs of that here. Brilliant, a brilliant save. You think that builds confidence for your players playing in front of you? I would suggest. <laughs> Just a tad. Slobosian a face-off win. Smart shovels it down low. Hyman and Slobosian. And it's Wedman. Misses Ottenbright. Smart racing to it. One thing about Ottenbright, he'll smack everything in sight. Should have seen his dad play for the Yorkton Terriers. Grant. He was a lot of fun to play against. Rather pluck my eyes with a knife with an axe. <laughs> DeWitt, Auden Bright, and then Adams comes over. Yeah, this one probably won't be for the faint of heart, and nor should it, w should it be, with a league title on the line. Strand to Hyman, the six foot five defenseman from Calgary. Lead all back to it first. Pressured, stripped by Barzell. In behind Niles, Harsh, Strand off the body of Henry Wide. Back to Reese Harsh. Austin Strand. Harsh, play catch. Now it's Barzell, feathers it. Harsh, his shot wide of the target. Good pressure by the Thunderbirds. Niles. Harsh again walks the line. Strand wants a shooting lane. Can he find one? Not really. Barzell. Puts on the brakes. Steele watching him closely. And then he spins himself down. Could Steele get away? Steele. Backhander. Stan Kuski stopped that too. And our first penalty. To Seattle. Well, what a turn of events in the offensive zone. Seattle has Regina on the ropes with clear puck possession and how about Barzell he blows a tire right there and what a bad time to do it steals on the defensive side he's got a partial breakaway and a real nice job by Harsh does he get the puck first very very close regardless when the puck made its way from the net to the corner. So the first power play of this set belongs to the Pats. They've operated in the playoffs at 25.4%. Seattle has killed off penalties at 81.4. And keep in mind, 
Regina only three power play goals and 18 opportunities in round three against the Hurricanes. That's an area for sure they're going to want to get to be more effective. Wagner schemes in on right wing. Back to the line for Mahura. Josh Mahura forced back by Bear. Wagner pressure. Seattle really aggressive in this area. Harrison can't keep it in at the line. And Seattle's content to leave it there in 20 minutes of the Western Hockey League Championship Series presented by Rogers is in the books. And I don't think anyone in the building will head to the concessions or washrooms unentertained. Oh, there was a lot to cheer about the shots. 11-8 in favor of the Pats. Both teams had quality scoring opportunities. How about the goaltending for Seattle? I thought the game was physical on both sides. Both teams clearly looking to get on the body. All in all, that's a heck of a 20 minutes. Game number two set for this building tomorrow night, 7 Mountain, 6 Pacific time, and we'll have it for you again, as we will the entire series. Darren DuPont is with Sam Steele. Yeah, thanks, Pete. Sam, how good does it feel to finally get this Western League championship underway? Oh, it's great. Uh, you know, we've worked a long time to get to this point, but uh, like we've said, we're not done yet. How much, Pete was talking about it, that it didn't seem like there was much of a feeling out process on the ice in that opening period. Was there much of one for you guys? Uh, I think there's always going to be a little one because, you know, we don't play these guys a lot. But I thought we settled in real quick and played great. How much do you enjoy the chance to play against other teams' top players, in particular Matthew Barzell in this series? Yeah, it's great. You always want to play against the best, and he's uh, definitely one of the best players in the league, so it's a good challenge. It's the first time since 1984 the Regina Pats are in the WHL Championship Series. Are you guys sensing that this is history in the making in this community? Yeah, definitely. Like you said, it's been a, a long time coming, so we're uh, you know happy be, to be the group that... Uh, you know, it goes this far, but like I, like I said, uh, we're not done yet. You've seen in the opening 20 minutes some of the heroics that their 16-year-old goaltender has had in these playoffs to get him to this point. How do you find a way to beat him in this series? Just keep doing the same things. Uh, he's obviously playing great hockey right now, so we got to chip away and uh, try to get a few. Sam, appreciate this. Good luck in the series. Thank you. Sam Steele of the Regina Pats, scoreless in the opening game one here after 20 minutes. Andy Neal, Jeff Rogers, and Joey Kenworth on the other side. The WHL Championship Series continues. The action. The 17 WHL Championship Series. No score between the Regina Pats and the Seattle Thunderbirds in game one of the best of seven as we welcome you back to Bob Dale Gloves WHL Central. And greetings to those of you watching south of the border tonight on this TV. Please be joined with the commissioner of the Western Hockey League, Ron Robison. This has been quite a week. The awards on Wednesday, the Bantam draft yesterday morning, and then the start of the WHL Championship Series. How big has the showcase been for the WHL this week? Well, it's been a very busy but very exciting week. Obviously, you mentioned the uh, WHL awards, the Bantam draft, and, and of course the opening of our championship series all in one week is, is a hectic 
time for everybody concerned but having said that we're really delighted with well, everything came off and I think our teams are delighted with the young prospects in the system at our Bantam draft and of course it's uh, it's great to start championship series in such a great environment here in Regina. It's hard to believe that we're already at this point of the year but uh, what are some of the highlights for 2016-17? Well clearly I, I keep coming back to the speed and skill in our league when you look at the 50 goal scores we had five this year and 100 point scores five again you know and it was I think when you look at the balance and stability of our league it's never been better uh, but the quality of play uh, to me is a highlight the prospects that continue to come through the system are terrific players and uh, and you just have to witness the playoffs and how competitive it's been uh, the balance is there and we're, we're, we're delighted with the old product overall the two young men who are up for the uh, four Broncos Memorial Trophy playing in this series Sam Steele and Matt Barzell and we got a sense of what Carl Sienkowski has done in his first year in the WHL and you're mentioning the young players in this league Kirby Dock in Saskatoon we got a chance to see him and he's looking like he's going to be something else Dylan Cousins in the last round for Lethbridge these young players uh, how much better is the game today with them and how they're going to carry it well it's amazing and it's a credit to the minor hockey system uh, especially in Western Canada and, and the, the job that the coaches do and the minor hockey program is preparing them for our level because these young players come in and step in and do a great job and it's uh, exciting to see the prospects around the league and uh, the draft is another indication of the great prospects coming up but you're right it, they, they've been able to step in and make that adjustment at a young age and it really is remarkable and as far as this series is concerned everybody knows Matthew Barzell what a great role he played at the World Junior Championship for Canada and, and Sam Steele has had just an incredible year of course our player of the year Adam Brooks of course had to that package and these two teams are uh, are going to put on a great display over this series the teams that I talked to at the Bantam draft yesterday morning after the first round he said they had players that were really happy to be chosen in the WHL a lot of times on social media as well best day of my life uh, such an honor the commitments from these kids to the WHL is that uh, something that's good uh, right now that you're seeing more and more every year in the draft well I think young players want to play at the highest level in the system they want to compete against their own age group they want to get on with their development right away and that's what we're seeing uh, players are really looking forward to the opportunity to come into the Western Hockey League uh, we feel that the Bantam draft gives them an opportunity to give that year an extra year of development prepare for entry to the league in the following season and and that's important and yeah the response has been great our teams are indicating that uh, we really haven't had anybody indicate that they're not coming uh, they're all very uh, interested in being part of this league and and that's a great thing well uh, a week ago yesterday the coup ice sale was confirmed by the board of governors uh, Greg Metis is taking over from Winnipeg Matt Cockle who we had a chance to talk to after the awards on Wednesday will take over as president and general manager but what's the feeling around the league with the new ownership in Cranbrook well, I guess twofold. One, uh, sad to see the Chinook family uh, no longer directly involved. They made such an amazing contribution to this league for so many years, uh, 45 years to be back in this direct association. We can't thank the family enough for their contributions and bringing the franchise to Kootenai to begin with. And now with new ownership, it's a fresh start. And uh, I think we're really excited to see what the response is going to be from the community, but they're, they're people who are very committed to this league, and uh, Matt Cockle is moving his family into the Cranbrook community and, and is going to be rolling up the sleeves and getting to work real soon, and already they've introduced a new brand. Of course, they've participated in the draft, and, and they're very excited to get started. What's going to be the biggest thing for them to be able to get that franchise to where it needs to be to be a, a strong one in the WHL? Well, it really just comes down to one thing, and that's community support and, and making sure that uh, fans are in attendance. Uh, we need the attendance to get to levels that are going to be acceptable to make that franchise viable. And, you know, we've got great hockey fans in that area. We know that, and we just need them to come out in larger numbers to support the team. What does the background of Greg Fettis and Matt Cockle bring to that organization as running the show there? Well, first of all, Greg Fettis, the uh, principal investor involved, is uh, very committed to uh, the Western Hockey League. Uh, he's been a fan of this league for many years and has been very anxious to become part of it, and this is his opportunity. And to bring along Matt Cockle, who's a very accomplished hockey executive, of course, working in the marketing department for many years with the Winnipeg Jets, and, and also a, a alumni, alumni of ours, of course, a goaltender who played in our league, has experienced it firsthand, and Matt's very passionate about the league as well, and I think it'll be a great combination. Uh, you've got somebody on the ground with both business and hockey expertise at Matt's level, and uh, we think they're a real good asset to our league.
in March, uh, Nanaimo, there was so much talk about the ice moving to Nanaimo, and then there was the vote that was soundly turned down by residents of Nanaimo. How disappointing was that? And does this, now with the ownership change, does that take Nanaimo out of it for now, or what's the feeling there? Well, I think it's been no secret that we've had an interest in Nanaimo for many years, and I think this is an opportunity to find out one way or the other whether they wanted to have, a, first of all, a facility that would accommodate a team. But obviously the community has made their decision, and we respect that, and, and uh, they've had a very good junior A franchise there for many years, and, and uh, hopefully... Uh, uh, maybe down the road, eventually, uh, they'll make a di different decision. But right now, we're focused on our current markets and making sure that our franchises continue to be viable there long term. Well, the Regina Pats and Prince George Cougars were both up for business of the year, which Regina won, and they went through ownership changes, too, three years ago. How much of an example are they showing to the new group now in Kootenai about how much change can happen so quickly as well? Well, ownership is so important, obviously, to begin with, but the transformation in those markets... Uh, Again, we know that they're great hockey centers. It's just a matter of, again, we're having winning teams, having a, a competitive product on the ice, but also doing a real good job in the community and marketing the, uh, marketing the franchise. And, and in this particular case in Regina, we can't say enough about what's happened and the work that John Paddock, obviously Dave Struch and the entire hockey organization has done. But at the end of the day, this is really engaging the community and supporting the team, and we see that coming back in, in uh, very, very encouraging ways in Prince George and, and of course, in Regina. The support has never been as high as it is now. This, I mean, you saw Lethbridge and Swift Current with two great runs as well. It seems like a new enthusiasm in the playoffs, even earlier in the rounds. And the Swift Current crowds were amazing. Same as in Lethbridge. How exciting is it to see what crowds have been like in these playoffs? Because early on, sometimes, they've been tough. It's really good to see. And, you know, we always wondered why. Of course, this is the best time of year for hockey, generally in the Western Hockey League and at any level. And the playoffs brings out the best of the players. It should bring out the best in the community support from the fans and we've really seen that across the league this year we're delighted by the the attendance this series for instance uh, we're, we're going to see great crowds in seattle as well uh and regina sold out it's been sold out 23 straight nights now in regina so you know that's carried over for the to the other markets and uh, we're very encouraged by that uh, so i'd be remiss if i didn't mention class action uh, lawsuit by uh former and current players, uh, OHL, it uh, got certification in Ontario. What about from the Western Hockey League and where that's at? What are the biggest concerns for the league in regards to the players' suit? Well, we're at a stage where we're waiting for a decision by the Alberta court. Uh, the Ontario court, as you mentioned, has been certified. That's what we expected. We are looking forward to the opportunity of stating our case in court. Uh, we've been functioning as an amateur hockey league since the inception of this league. Uh, we believe our players are amateur hockey players and uh, and uh, they get tremendous treatment. That's the most important thing. Our ownership is committed uh, over the years to improving the player experience, providing tremendous benefits for the players and including a guaranteed scholarship program, which I know the parents and the players really value. And that this is really not coming from our parents and, and players themselves. This is coming from outside sources. And, and we're hopeful that we can get through this and, uh, and continue to offer the same uh, program that we currently offer for the players. Don Cherry recently came out uh, in support of the leagues uh, in regards to this, but provincial clarification too. BC has gone ahead with uh, exempting the BC clubs uh, from this, uh, some US states, Washington, Oregon. Uh, what about the provincial clarification and the help from the governments in being able to well, help your side? That's the key, Andy. There's no question. And we need the uh, provincial governments to step up. Province of Saskatchewan was the first to do that in 2014, followed by Washington State, province of British Columbia. We're very fortunate. We expect we'll have a decision in Oregon and Manitoba very soon. And now we just have to Alberta to deal with them. We're, we're working on that. Obviously, uh, it's a major concern to us. But, but we think at the end of the day, uh, we want to preserve not only the Western Hockey League, but more importantly, all of amateur hockey and all of amateur sport would be affected. And it would be uh, devastating to all of those levels to have anything impact to that extent. Is this as much... Uh in the court of public opinion is that also a battle that you're dealing with uh, when it comes to what people outside and uh, the public are thinking in regards to this i think generally most people don't understand it at all they don't understand why there's even a challenge in this area that the complaints aren't coming from our players or our parents it's coming from other sources and, and it's very disappointing to be honest with you but i don't want to take away from this great series and the, and the great league we have our ownership is very committed to keeping things uh, moving forward but 
again, it's more of the repercussions for all of amateur hockey and amateur sport, because it won't just be us affected. If it's uh, if it goes the other way, it'll be all of these uh, organizations. Well, and what did it mean to have Don Cherry speak the way he did a couple of nights ago? Well, Don's such a great supporter of the Canadian Hockey League, and and of course, uh, having direct involvement with our prospects games for years, is very well aware of it. And I think he he reflects a lot of the frustration that's out there right now that we are even having to go through this. So at the end of the day, let's hope that uh, uh, we'll be on the successful side of that decision. And uh, Seattle, uh, they're going to be hosting next week in the uh, games three, four, and if necessary, five. What's uh, been the take of the U.S. big market in getting ready for the championship this Our time? Our U.S. division is just a terrific division. When you look at it overall, the teams are very competitive and, and they have great rivalries there. And interest in the, uh, the market in Seattle and since the move to Kent has been terrific. Uh, Tuesday nights is actually the biggest night of the week, and, and that'll be the opening, the third game of the series, and it'll be full that night for sure, and it will be, certainly we expect it to be full for the balance of the season, for the balance of the series as well. So we're really excited about this. These are two teams that can put up a lot of offense. They're very exciting to watch, and even though the first period, I think, was a bit of a feeling out process, quite frankly, I think you're going to see some real freewheeling over the course of the series. Ron, this is my sixth year, and uh, it's been a real pleasure being able to chat with you uh, throughout all the candid talks. Uh, really appreciate all the times that you've been on the show. Thanks again tonight. Thanks, Andy. I'd just like to say uh, before we leave that uh, we would like to extend our appreciation to Shaw Communications, uh, but in particular to the staff who have been with us alongside 13 seasons broadcasting questions hockey league regular season games and, and playoff games you've really taken us to a level that we really appreciate and uh, and especially to grant wilkins dave roberts and the entire crew and andy yourself uh, you've done a tremendous job it's always been very professional and uh, we've enjoyed it very much well we hope it's not the last uh, we hope there's another platform we can do this on thanks again ron thanks andy ron robinson commissioner of the western hockey league second period on the way from regina here on left machinery whl on shaw and access in this tv in the u.s back we're just seconds away from the start of period number two of game one of the Western Hockey League Championship Series intriguing entertaining heavy you could use a lot of adjectives oh you sure can there was so much to to be entertained by but I I thought early in the game that Regina did a really nice job getting the puck deep and making Seattle's defense turn it was clear to me that they wanted to put the puck and the game on the wall down low that was led by Steele and leadoff taking hits to make a play and how about that play to Henry on the back door and there's lead all again separate the man from the puck and now you've got puck possession and now you can create and I thought again that Regina did a really good job initiating that 
in that first period and and because of that they created a lot of stuff off of the wall and i'll tell you that seattle defense isn't a defense that's easy to play against look at tishka here with good gap that's austin wagner right there that he totally neutralized and took his speed away from him but coming back the other way regina showed why they're one of the why they were the biggest scoring team in the league and harsh with the stick to tip it away and there's another one in desperation on that partial breakaway stankowski man oh man was he excellent when he needed to be he made saves he made desperation saves he controlled his rebounds and what a great first 20 we'll look forward to another coming up second underway stankowski with 11 saves none better than the one off wagner Tyler Brown made eight at the other end. Steele turns it over. Answer with an early opportunity. Nearly ran out of room. And then Brooks picks his pocket. Good opportunity for the product of Englewood, Colorado. Vulcan off lead all and out of play. Levitt Machinery's WHL on Shaw has been brought to you by Levitt Machinery. Online at levittmachinery.com. Well, a pretty good start to that second period. Scott Enzer was looking to find his sixth goal of the postseason. He had 18 and 40 games in the regular season. This is a guy that competes, and he's elevated his game. The co-captain of the Seattle Thunderbirds comes up with a great chance early in the second member of the 2016 United States World Junior Team. Brooks. Steele. Pat still with 20 seconds to go on a power play. Hobbs looking for space. His hard wrister missed on the far side. He relays it. Steele thought about shooting it. Now he does. Brooks had to jump over his stick and out to neutral ice. Notice the four penalty killers from Seattle. The one thing that you won't see them do is get caught out of position. They'll be happy to stay in a tight box so long as they've got bodies in lanes. Thunderbirds kill off the series opening penalty and now Regina ices it 116 into the second frame. One of the things you have to be very aware of when you're killing penalties especially a, against a team that has the offensive prowess like the Regina Pats is you do not want to get caught chasing them because you can't match their skill or their speed when they're up a man and they do a heck of a job killing penalties Seattle does by staying in lanes and letting pucks hit them and deflect wide. John Paddock, David Struish the architects of this Regina program. And Steele out against Barzell. No Cole is our tonight. Suspended for the first game. We'll see the big Columbus forward, as in Blue Jackets prospect, in game two tomorrow. Well, will, he, will he be an addition in his presence? I mean, this is a guy that's 6'2", 225 pounds, and, and he plays like it. I think that he takes took huge steps from his experience last year Colasar did throughout the playoffs I thought he was okay this year he's been exceptional leading his team with 22 points and he'll be a welcomed addition in game two Steve Konowalczyk's team has battled so many injuries this season basically spent the entire year at less than full strength and they really got on a roll in the second half of the season Barzell with Niles up on that line tonight in place of Colazar. Lead all. Chips it in. He's upended by Hyman. Tishka. Lead all stays right with him, and Tishka finds Barzell behind the net. He had seven assists in last year's league final. Three straight multi point games to end it. Hyman's wrist shot. Brown hangs on and will leave it for Mahura. Mahura to Wagner. Wagner around Strand. Wagner off the stick again of Harsh. Wagner stays with it. The LA fourth rounder. Deflects off the high glass. Strand knocks it down against Slobosian. And sending Niles away. Six goals in the playoffs. Finds Reese Harsh from Grand Prairie, Alberta. You talk about a good stick. He may have saved three goals against with his stick just so far in this game. Those little things that help you win. 
the big spammy D-men from Seattle. They've got range. Everybody over six foot. Adams with a good move. And then looks like he may have taken a stick in the chin. He makes his way off. Here comes Philip Ball. And Bear, you can't play anyone much better than Ethan Bear did. Turned over. Brooks, a shot backhander. Goes high and wide as Moylanen unable to clear. And Strand should and does to Wedman, intercepted by DeWitt. Chase Harrison to Adam Brooks. Brooks with Robbie Holmes. Brooks is hurt. Holmes a shot, and Brooks is in all kinds of trouble. And it was Ottenbright. Well, Ottenbright had Brooks in the tracks. He's not moving. He's down, and, and it'll be interesting to see the replay of this. And to me, it looked like it may have been a little late. You can see Robbie Holmes and company from Regina in there not happy about it. Keep in mind, Brooks missed five games in round two when he got hurt against the Swift Current Broncos. There it is. Wow. He was unsuspecting. And we'll see it here. So Brooks has the puck. It's gone. Head down. Oh, boy, that's borderline. First team all-star in the East, second leading scorer during the regular season. Well, the thing with the head is you can see that Ottenbright had him lined up when Brooks had the puck on his stick and he had committed to the head. Brooks dishes it wide and to me it's, wow, he was unsuspecting his head was down. They're going to take Ottenbright here for sure. Just hope that the Regina captain is okay. As I mentioned earlier, he was hurt in game two against Swift Current, sat out games three and four, and was on the bench without taking a shift in games five, six, and seven. And boy, has he ever been a key part of their team since his return. He's up, but not looking overly stable. We'll take another look at this in real time, and this is how fast things happen. It goes D to D, and look at Brooks come through the middle, dishes it, and right there you can see as he's passing the puck, Ottenbright's committed to the hit. He's got him in the tracks, and I'll tell you, that was a heavy, heavy hit. John Paddock, the executive and general manager of the year, announced two days ago at the Western Hockey League Awards Luncheon in Calgary. Referee Ingram over to explain the call, which we're waiting for. Right now, they've got two minutes up per side. Robbie Holmes has got two minutes, and he's in the penalty box for a rough, is what I assume. And Ottenbright for a charge, I'm assuming. We'll see if there's more. Yeah, Holmes, the 17-year-old from Sherwood Park coming to the defense after a hellacious collision involving Turner Ottenbright. Wow. Stopped him in his tracks. Hearing the response from the crowd now as they're starting to learn that it's going to be even up. They wanted more. You see John Paddock look on. Two minutes for Holmes, two minutes for Ottenbright. And even though we've taken a number of bucks at it, Kevin, I almost wonder if the most damage that was done is when Brooks's head came down and hit the ice. Well, I'm sure that didn't feel good either, but he, when he took that hip check from Ottenbright, it looked to me like Brooks came to an absolute blunt stop. Either way, neither feel good. Brock with a chance, and Brown makes maybe his best save of the game off Ryan Groff. 
Well, it was an innocent play here and a quick transition. Grop had time and space. He wasn't necessarily expecting to see it as the puck caroms off the wall. There's a quick release from Grop and Brown calmly makes the save and allows no rebound in 50 games in the regular season. He had 33 wins, 12, 2, and 3 here in 17 games in the postseason for Brown. Grop, a 35 goal getter during the regular season, riding a four-game point playoff streak coming in. Grop had points in 27 of his last 29 games in the regular season, totaling for 51 points. His second half was lights out. True and Hobbs, and Hobbs delivers a blow to the big Danish forward. He was the captain of Denmark at this year's World Junior. Moy Linen hopes to be there in Buffalo. And he's tugged down, and now the pass will be shorthanded for the first time in the game. Well, what, what great effort here by Moy Linen from Finland is he's out sized here probably by about 30 pounds and four inches against Connor Hobbs and you can see Hobbs throwing his weight around but Moy Linen on the body and Hobbs ends up taking the holding penalty what great strength and you can see the emotions and he's a passionate guy When you see what happened to Brooks moments ago. Well, to me, that, that comes from your coaching staff and your leadership. It ain't easy. When you see your best player and your captain of your team go down, it's not easy. I saw it in our third round on our way to our Stanley Cup championship in Anaheim. Paul Quiz took that hit, that open ice hit from Kevin Stevens. He was out cold on the ice, and that affected everybody in the building, but certainly every player. Not easy to see. Seattle's first power play, operating in the playoffs at 35%. Bear, he scores! Ethan Bear to the top shelf. And Seattle strikes first. Well, if you had any question as to how that hand or wrist injury for Ethan Bear is feeling, that might answer the question for you as Bear tees one up in a big way. That's his sixth in the postseason, his 17th point in his 12th game. And He's returning after missing. Pick to the Edmonton Oilers. And it's not the right hand that's the problem. It's the left. But he whistles it to the top shelf. And Seattle scores the series first goal on a power play, 4.55 in. And there's 200 plus people here from Ochapaway that are on their feet. Couldn't be happier for their idol, their mentor, Ethan Bear. Such a leader in his own community. See how the Pats respond. We're still four on four. The power play goal came four on three. Adam Brooks has left the game with what looked to be a concussion. Now, I shouldn't play doctor on television or anywhere else, but he was really shaken up. Hey, let's be honest. That's what everybody assumes. That's what you hope that is not the case. But what a what a concept or what a situation here for Regina. You talked about it earlier, Pete, with that loss of their captain, and that's an emotional drop, and then they give up a power play goal moments after. This is a real key time in the game for the maturity of this group to regroup and get themselves back into this game. Bears six of the playoffs on the power play has Seattle in front. He scored two goals and added five assists in last year's championship series. And for sure, the doctors would be checking. Zabrowski nearly tied it. Steal an opportunity, couldn't direct it on target. Mahura, lead all, backhander, and the calm and cool Stankowski steered it to the open corner. Great sticks from the Seattle defenseman right there. Aaron Hyman looked to me, he was beat, but he got the stick of steel to negate the chance on the back door. So the Holmes and Otten Bright penalties have expired. Barzell back in his own territory. Tishka to Grop. He wheels into the zone. Ryan Grop backhands it in front. 
Belongs to Barzell, a quick backhander off of Zabrowski's skate. Belongs to Lidal, crunched by Niles. Donovan Niles towards Matt Wedman. And good body position by Mahura to find Robbie Holmes, who had a big goal in that comeback, down 3-0 early in Game 6 in Lethbridge. As a matter of fact, it was his goal that really helped turn the tide. And you talk about that depth from both teams. There's that depth scoring from Regina coming up big. He had two goals in the entire regular season. He has two in the playoffs. A former member of Canada's National Junior Baseball Program. How about that story? You gotta Ooh. choose which sport you want. You're so good at both. That's an athlete. That's an athlete, you're right. Which we need and to start developing, in my opinion, more of. Not just single sports. But that's a rant for another day. Is now Wagner into it. Whips as we go back between the benches and Derek. <laughs> Appreciate that, Pete. Well, uncertainty and concern on the bench of the Regina Pats right now because they don't know the status of their captain, Adam Brooks, currently in with the doctors right now being evaluated, and they're not sure whether they're going to see him in this game tonight or not. So we'll update you guys when we have more down here. And here's the reason as to why certainly the doctors evaluating and in what they call, I'm sure right now, concussion protocol. Yep. There's no doubt about that. If you don't have it after that hit, I don't know what hit you do have it after. But you look at the body makeup of, of Turner on, right? He, he's a big, intimidating guy, but he's he's a lanky guy, too. He's not massive by any means, but he plays an intimidating style of a game and on the body, as we saw an example of, the, example of there. Steele wins a race against the game's goal-getter, Ethan Bear. Lead all hit! off the mask of Stan Kowski, who's been a story so far in game one. Mahura, down low to Steele. Sam Steele from behind the net, off of Hyman, and the puck on the stick now of drop with Barzell. Rolls off his tape, trying to retrieve it, and Henry will flip it. Piece of the glass, or it would have been a penalty. I think at least it hit the glass before it went out. Well, what an opportunity here for the Regina Pats. That's 35 goal scorer Nick Henry, and he shoots it right at him. Look to the right and the left. There's net to shoot at there. Henry, to me, is a guy that's more than capable and has enough presence of mind to put that puck in a corner. Instead, he shoots it right at Stankowski. It makes me wonder. When you see a goaltender make some of the saves that he's made throughout the course of this playoffs, and particularly tonight, does that get in the head of the shooter? I mean, it's a shot, it's a quick release, but there's something to shoot at there. I think you see, see that shot two out of three times. Henry's putting that in the top corner. Apparently, if it did go off the glass, it wasn't the glass it needed to go off of. It's a delay of game to Nick Henry. So the Thunderbirds, who are one for one on the power play, back at it again. 35% in the playoffs. 33% in their series win over Kelowna. Barzell, who has points now in all 11 playoff games he's participated in. Bear to Barzell. Moylan in, in the slot, true with a big body down low. Bear thinks about it. To Barzell, his shot off of Hobbs. Bear to Grot. Barzell in the corner, pressured by Hobbs. Barzell tapped off his stick by Harrison. Finds Alexander True, and now Bear to Barzell. This is the guy they want to have with it. Barzell, Pat's pack back. Sharp angle, Brown the save, and then forced the net off. You saw the tight box from Regina, and we talked to Paddock and Dave Strush 
this morning about their penalty kill and the one thing you will not see Regina do is chase especially when Barzell is on the ice look at how they're letting him have that perimeter they don't want to get into a foot race with him on the outside they're going to lock down lanes they're going to play a passive tight box and they're going to rely on their goaltender to well not knock the net off but they're going to rely on him to make saves and therefore was to block and get in the way of shots Barzell remains out the rest of Steve Connell Walchuk's power play unit changes Tishka now with Strand who has four playoff goals Enser and Niles Sobrovsky broke it up lead all unable to clear the zone Niles finds Strand great save by Brown terrific kick save by Tyler Brown what a kick save and that's compete right there you can see him come out and challenge he sees Strand's winding up kick save what a save Enser drops Tishka and Brown handles that too well another example of a poised goaltender and you talk about Brown maybe not getting the credit that he deserves all the time. We'll give him credit here. Is look at the traffic that he has to fight through. He doesn't see that puck coming as Steele is down attempting the block. But he comes out, he makes a positional save, and on the follow-up shot, he makes another even better save with no rebound. He sponges it up. Turned aside, 13 of the 14 that he's faced. 21 remaining in the penalty to 21, Nick Henry. Enser versus Slobosian, and I think the details in Slobosian's game, a big reason why Regina has had the success they've had this spring. Such a critical part of the turnaround in round two against Swift Current. The former captain of the Saskatoon Blades traded the Spokane and then onward to Regina, and he's definitely playing his best hockey of the season here in the postseason. He's stepped it up. Buziak, who had two big assists in game six, versus Lethbridge and the penalty to Henry has expired. Ethan Bear's power play goal, the lone marker of this series, which is off to quite a start. Niles, with that low center of gravity, he's strong. Back to Tishka for True, off the heel of his stick. And Smart, off the boards and out. Bear whips it to Tyler Adams. Smart with True bearing down on him. And Smart will have more time and space, I think. Adams closed the gap. True keeps it in for a second before Buziak from North Battleford shoots it in. True enters the zone. Wrist shot. Big rebound that time. Mahura there to clear it. And here comes Robbie Holmes with Steele and Henry. John Paddock and Dave Struess forced to make some changes with the huge absence now of Captain Adam Brooks. Well, we saw the forecheck and we showed it after the first period from the Regina Pats, and I think Seattle has responded with a fantastic forecheck of their own. We saw examples of it in this last shift. They're getting the puck low, and they are coming with some speed. There's no doubt about that. Barzell to Wedman. Barzell's offside. He doesn't like it but has to clear the zone and does. Strand came over in a trade from Red Deer for Brandon Schildhouse. Here's Barzell. Stick handling, he could do that in a phone booth. Hot and bright. The villain in this rink and will be for the rest of the series. Niles. Twisting, turning on Mahura, and there's Steele defensively. Regina with numbers. Lead all. Henry deflected. Stankowski stops a couple on the short side. Zabrowski, Ottenbright, went to a knee to block it. Pats pressuring, looking for an equalizer. Oh, takes a run at Ottenbright. Oh, hit Barzell and went to an open wing. Drop, who had an assist along with Barzell on the power play goal, backhands it in and makes his way to the Thunderbirds bench. Chase Harrison. 
Slobosian. He becomes even more important now with the absence of Brooks. Harrison, his shot wide. Bear, Wagner wins that race. To Philip Ball, trying to cut in front. And True wouldn't allow it. Wagner possesses it one more time. Hyman in the corner, he has his man pinned. That's all. And then a big hit from Wagner, who knocks down Zach Andrusiak, a rare shift for the fourth line. Here comes Smart. Blocked by Bear, stays with it and just missed to win. In transition now, Enser in the other direction with Moylanen and Vulcan, and Scholler plays him well. Quite a tussle in game one. Strand settles it down to Enser, who tips it in neatly for Vulcan. He has good speed. Nolan Vulcan back, hands it in front. Moylinen off the skate, stays with it, back, hands it right through the crease. Strand in the shooting lane was Holmes. And some pressure from the Thunderbirds. Ill-advised clearing attempt in front Wedman, but he ran into Smart, who made a nice recovery, and there'll be another Regina delay of game penalty as DeWitt sent it into the stands. Ethan Bear on the power play, the defenseman of the year, has Seattle on the board in game one. Before and after the game, Tony Romas offers casual family dining. Tony Romas, a family destination, legendary ribs, and famous for so much more. Welcome to Select Fluid Power, home of our brand new state-of-the-art cylinder repair and hard chrome plating facility. With a fully equipped hydraulic cylinder repair shop, Select Fluid Power is your one-stop cylinder repair shop. Open seven days a week, serving Western Canada. Hi folks, Don Taylor here. Need a lift? At Levin Machinery, they sell, rent, lease, and service machinery for your material handling needs. And they offer certified training. Stack it, reach it, lift it. Levin. On the Thunderbirds bench with head coach Steve Conowalchuk. And Steve, as you get through this opening part of the game, we've already seen the impact, but what's the real impact of having Ethan Bear back in the lineup? Well, I mean, he's a good player. You see his shot there, and uh, you know, he moves the puck up. He's a good leader. He's a good competitive player, a big part of our team. What did you learn from going through this process of a WHL championship series a year ago? Well, that it's a lot of work and a, and a lot of grind, and it takes a lot of character, and you just got to go out of shift after shift. Steve, thank you. Thank you. Well, a good push here from the... Pats on the entry. Look at Leadall's heads up play. He recognizes to the left. There's the open man driving and Nick Henry and good opportunities at one end, but the pushback from Seattle. Boy, do they have the Pats hemmed in for a lengthy shift and they're tired. DeWitt hastily takes the puck and there's the delay of game penalty. Had time to get it out, but the Pats were dog tired. Smart couldn't even stand up anymore. And delay of game, another penalty to kill here as that lethal power play for the Thunderbirds goes back to work. Third straight penalty for the Pats. Brown makes his way back to the net. Standing room only again at the Brandt Center. First hockey this fan base has watched in May outside of the 2001 Memorial Cup when they were the hosts. They'll be the hosts in 2018 as well. The 100th anniversary of the Memorial Cup. And they'll do an amazing job. That you can take to the bank. Face off win, and lead all clears it down the ice. Eight for 24 in round three versus Kelowna. Seattle was on the power play, and you might ask and wonder what the details are that makes their power play so well. Well, Ethan Bear, for one, he can shoot the puck. We saw that tonight the skill that guys like Barzell have, and they've got grit, guys that are willing to go to the front of the net. Well, this one only lasts 19 seconds because 
the 18-year-old Finn that wears 18, Sammy Moylinen, with a boarding penalty. Now you see it on the right side of your screen there as he takes the body on Josh Mahura. Like you said, 18 seconds in, a neutralized power play to four on four. And Mahura felt that, he was shaken. So no surprise to see Wagner four on four. It's dropped Barzell, Slobosian in a spot that Adam Brooks would normally occupy, I would think. And we await word from the medical staff. I'm not sure what we'll hear. It is the playoffs, but just hoping for his health. Deflected shot goes wide. Barzell trying to move it out, and he'll be able to on the third opportunity as it's backhanded in on Stankowski, who nearly deflected it into his own net. Hobbs rips it off the glass. Harrison will keep it in at the left point. Takes a shove from Ottenbright. Grop gathering speed to Ottenbright. Slobosian, 13 on 13. He's nearly swept it to Grop. And here's Slobosian. Fantastic work by Slobosian and Wagner. Even when they don't have the puck, they pressure Seattle's defense, make them uncomfortable. And because of that, they've caused a couple turnovers and as a result we've been looking to our left here so far in this four on four. Regina will have a very short power play for 19 seconds after the four on four but here's Enser loses his balance regains it against Mahura. Volk in there to support the puck. Zabrowski is the pad player off the goal post. Tishka set up he had some room and he rang it off the iron. Jarrett Tishka nearly makes it 2-0. Here's Volkin. Scampers in against Sergei Zabrowski. He was plus 72 to lead everyone during the regular season in that category. And a plus 24 coming into tonight, which is first in the playoffs as well. Mahura to lead all. Glove save by Stankowski. Look at this last opportunity for the Seattle Thunderbirds. And you talk about guys with low center of gravity and being torquey. It's Vulcan and Scott Enzer winning a battle. They come out of the pile with the puck, and they hit Tishka on that back door, and he hits the plumbing on that right side. It was a one battle, a nice job down low, coming out of the pile with the puck, and Tishka comes so close, putting his team up 2-0. Tishka with one playoff goal came in game three of the opening round sweep of the Tri-City Americans. He had six goals regular season and 25 points in 54 games. Missed time with injury. A lot of the Thunderbirds did this season. Over 300 man games lost throughout the course of the regular season. And you never want that for your group. But the positive is you get guys playing out of position, playing in situations that now they'll be comfortable in. And they're using their depth here in the postseason. And remember, without their top playoff point producer in Keegan Kolasar tonight, he'll return for game two tomorrow. Alexander True, blocked by Harrison, shots at it, and Brown will hold it. Tyler Brown. The 20 year old from Winnipeg, 12 and 5 in the playoffs. He was 4 and 2 in the series against Leftridge. 257 goals against average and a 905 save percentage. And at times in that series, when they needed him the most, he was at his best. 316 remaining in game one, game two set, same time. Same place, we'll have it for you again right here on Shaw Access and delighted to have our friends from the United States tuning in on this TV. Stankowski will leave it for Reese Harsh. Pressured by Robbie Holmes. Harrison keeps it in with some help from DeWitt. Tishka, good outlet to Matthew Wedman. Adams will clear it in, takes a bump in the neutral zone from Buziak. 
They'll wave it off, feeling like Harsh could have played it. And Bear, the game's goal getter, sends Moylinen away. Moylinen darts in, puts on the brakes to Bear. Finds Ottenbright. That shot was intended as a pass off the end board. Set, uh, that's a set play for sure and a heads up play. Everybody on the ice knew it was coming. Guys net front were looking for the redirect and a real wise decision by Ottenbright. He knew the leans to the net were locked down. Steele crumples Bear in the corner. And that hurt him. He could feel it all the way from here. I think I heard him from up here. His Ooh. legs were spread. He went into the boards awkwardly, and he's taking his time to get back up on his feet. Already dealing with a hand or wrist problem on the left hand. Get another look at the hit. There's the initial on on right, right there. You can see it's from behind. His legs are separated. It looked to me like he may have kissed the dasher a bit but he looks to be none worse for the wear and we'll look at that shot from Ottenbright and to me this is a real heads up play by a defenseman when you know the lanes are locked down we'll get a good look at it here there's nothing to shoot at what do you do put it 20 feet wide do you know the redirect's going to go to a dangerous area the Thunderbirds forwards were anticipating and created a partial chance on goal because of it these teams only met once during the regular season it happened all the way back in this building on October the 30th Regina won that game six to three no Barzell or Kulazar in the Seattle lineup that night it's funny it's surprising they're playing against each other like they play each other every other weekend well said hot and bright Mahura pinching on Niles wins the race with his skating ability Lead all after it along the boards. Good play by Barzell, and then Lead all knocked his clearing pass down with his stick. This tussle ensues. Steele against Hyman. Steele in front. Mahura. Somehow that went wide. Can't wait to get another look. Unbelievable, Mahura being a left-handed shot. He wasn't able to one-time the puck going across his body, but how about the presence of mind for Steele to come out, wins the battle, and look at him by time, by space. There's the pass right in the button, but Mahura has to load before he can release it. You can see Ottenbright and Stankowski push to get to the far post. And again, here's another look, the left-handed shot from Mahura. Can't one-touch it to the back of the net. Isn't able to get it off in time. Sam Steele just showed you why he had 81 assists during the regular season. Absolutely never panics when he has the puck, even if he's in traffic. There are times where the only issue from the coaching staff is they'd like him to shoot it a little bit more. <laughs> and he scored 50. <laughs> shoot more, son. Especially on the power play. A race for it, and Wagner, oh, what do you know? Austin Wagner beats out an icing. There's a stunner, <laughs> not so much. You don't need stone cold in the building for that one. All in the final minute of period two. Hobbs cruising in. Hobbs back to Chase Harrison, lots of traffic in front and Vulcan went down to block it. Hobbs racing for it, shot it high and wide. All versus Vulcan, couldn't take the puck with him. Wagner and Vulcan stood up to that hit well. Harrison breaks it up. Strand looked to get his stick up on Hobbs, and then Enser was nearly left by himself for a breakaway. Moylinen. Two periods in. Seattle leads 1-0. And I would suggest series on. There's no question about that. And to me, it's going to be a huge reset here for the Regina Pats. They've got some emotional mountains to overcome here. We saw the hit against Adam Brooks. They're missing their captain. And they're one of their best players. And they've gone down on a power play goal against. I thought that Seattle pushed. They were physical. The Pats had a response. It was another excellent 20 minutes of hockey. But we'll have to see Regina recover after a big blow having their captain out. Delivered by Turner Ottenbright. 1-0 Seattle in game one after 
40 minutes, shots on goal, 19-16 in favor of the home side. It was 11-8 after the first. And Kevin, I think you bring up a great point about the reset. So difficult to see one of your teammates go down in that manner. And Matthew Barzell has joined Darren DuPont. Yeah, thanks, Pete. Matt, 40 minutes into the WHL championship, you're here for a second time in a row. So how good does it feel to be back and finally back on the ice in this series? Yeah, it's fun. Uh, I'm a competitive guy, and you know what better stage is is you know the competitiveness here uh, in the finals. So uh, it's been a good game so far, and you know we're looking at it to be a tough series. We know these guys are good, and uh, we're excited. Speaking of being a competitive guy, we had Sam Steele in the opening intermission, and I asked him the same question: How much do you enjoy the chance to go head to head against their top player on the other side? Yeah, it's good. Obviously, he had a, a heck of a year, and uh, he's a hell of a player. So. Um, you know, it's always fun playing against guys that good, so kind of kind of raises your game and forces you to be a better player, so uh, it's fun. Kevin Sawyer mentioned on the broadcast in that second period that it almost appears that you guys are playing as if these two teams play each other every second weekend. For teams that only play each other once a year, how easy was it to get into the game early? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's, it's the finals. You know, you don't play these guys too much, so you kind of got to establish that, that hate for a team, right? I mean, uh, you got to learn to hate them, hate them pretty quick, and... Um, it's been a physical game so far. They got some big boys, and we got some big boys too. So it's been a it's been a tough uh, first 40 here, and I'm sure the 20 uh, last 20 won't be any different. Yeah, physical physicality, intensity is there. How much do you guys enjoy when the game comes with a lot of that? Uh, it's one of the staples of our game. Uh, we play a physical game all year. We play in a pretty tight division where uh, a, every game's physical. So uh, we're used to it. It's fun. It gets you into the game, giving hits, taking hits. It's part of hockey. So. Uh, it's been a, been a hard, competitive 40 minutes here. Matt, appreciate it. We're looking forward to a good series. Thank you. Matthew Barzell of the Seattle Thunderbirds. On the other side of the break, we've got Andy, Jeff, and Joey. Two periods in the books. Game one of the WHL's championship series. Access 7 Sports presents the Regina Pats and the Seattle Thunderbirds in the WHL Championship. Watch exclusive full game coverage only on Access 7. Come join a Canada 150 celebration as the RCMP Heritage Center presents the Tattoo Royale. Two spectacular performances May 23rd and 24th featuring the world famous RCMP musical ride. Music, dance, masked pipe and marching bands, police and military displays, and an array of performances and entertainment for the whole family. A Canada 150 celebration, Tattoo Royale, featuring the musical ride. Presented by the RCMP Heritage Center May 23rd and 24th. Tickets now on sale at the Brand Center box office or online at Ticketmaster.ca. Join the conversation. Tweet at MyAccess underscore CA. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to find out what's new on Access 7. Christmas Day, I'm going to ask Steffi to marry me. And I'd really like your blessing. <laughs> yeah. No. But just give me a couple days to win you over. By Christmas morning, you're going to be calling me son. I'm going to be calling you dad. Don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to, dad. I know it won't. Dad, it will. Stop that. What, dad? That. Dad, stop that. Dad, what are you talking about? Yes, sir. Bob. Steph, you could be dating anyone. Why, Laird? He makes me really happy. That Bob Dale Gloves WHL Central is brought to you by Bob Dale Gloves. Found online at BobDaleGloves.com. Well, Ethan Bear rips home his sixth in his return to the lineup for the Seattle Thunderbirds after missing three games because of a hand injury. But he returns to break the ice in this 2017 WHL Championship Series. Welcome back to Bobdale Club's WHL Central. Please be joined with Jeff Rogers to my left, Joey Kenward to my right. Uh, plenty of Ethan Bear supporters actually right beside us here in our central location. But a 1-0 Seattle lead. And one of the big moments in this game through two periods is the big hit, Joey, on Adam Brooks. 
trucks. All right, for you viewers that maybe didn't catch it in the early stages of period two, let's take a look at it right now. Now, Turner Rottenbright is one of the most physical defensemen, not just on the Seattle Thunderbirds, but in the entire WHL conference. And he catches Pat's captain, Adam Brooks, at the blue line. It was a shoulder-to-head contact. Brooks left the game, has not returned. There was no penalty called on this play, and that was to the chagrin of the home faithful here at the Brand Center, and Ethan Bear was able to capitalize on an ensuing power play opportunity shortly thereafter, and that's certainly the biggest talking point that we've had through 40 minutes, and for good reason, because that is about as close to a borderline collision as you'll see in junior hockey. Adam Brooks had such a great end to the series in the Eastern Conference Championship against Lethbridge, and I know it's early, Jeff, but is that the kind of hit that can turn a series around? Because not only did Brooks get the worst of it, but it seemed like Seattle got a jolt, too, from it. Well, very much so. It's very devastating for the Regina Pats. You see your captain take a hit like that. That's a lot to get over. I thought Regina actually bounced back pretty good. And you know what? To me, that's one of the disadvantages of not having that interdivisional play only playing the Seattle Thunderbirds one. Out in the Western Conference, if you're a skill guy, you know Turner Rottenbright's on the ice, and you know he loves that hit through the middle. Adam Brooks only played against him once this year. Maybe not. Maybe forget he's on the ice. Play with the puck in the middle. Turner comes over with that hit. So a little bit of an unfortunate circumstance there. That lack of knowledge of the other team, knowing the other team's tendencies, kind of really hurt Adam Brooks. Well, uh, Sam Steele, Jeff, the WHL's Four Broncos Memorial Trophy winner with 131 points. But what's he going to do to have to lead Regina in this series? Boy, what a season that Sam Steele had. And when you look at it coming into this series, you kind of like the position Sam Steele was in. He had Adam Brooks on the second center, him on number one, and they kind of spread the defense around, and now it's all going to rely on Sam Steele. And as we look at these clips, some of his handiwork, the one thing about Sam Steele, if you back off on him and you give him any kind of time, he's going to make you pay. We'll see here, guys, back off, give him a little bit of time, and he makes no mistakes when he gets that kind of time. You know, and as we talked about, so deadly on the power play, 131 points, you know, Sam Steele, and really looking forward to that matchup. Him and the runner-up for the player of the year, Matthew Barzal. It's been a fun matchup to watch so far here through two periods. And Wyatt Slavotion, this maybe adds to his importance for the Pats, too. He had three points in game six, the clincher against the Lethbridge Hurricanes. You know, when the Wyatt Slavotion trade was made by John Paddock, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal. People kind of wondering why you trade for Wyatt Slavotion. John Paddock said you could not have enough centermen. And twice during these playoffs, during a Swift Current Series, Adam Brooks goes out. Who steps in? Slobosian steps in, does an outstanding job. Tonight, Adam Brooks goes down. Who steps into his spot? Wyatt Slobosian. He's a guy that can come in. He can kill penalties. He can play in your power play. He can move up to that wing on the first and second line, or as in a situation tonight, he can play center. You can never have enough guys like Wyatt Slobosian on your team. He's a guy that can do all kinds of things. He's good in the room, a former captain in this league. Wyatt Slobosian come playoff time. He's, to me, the most important trade of this season, especially with Jake Lasition going down right after the, the acquisition. Another sentiment for John Pats. Well, on the other side of the ledger, Matthew Barzell was the Western Conference nominee for Outstanding Player in the WHL, and now he's got an assist on the Ethan Barrett goal, Joey. So that's 11 straight in the playoffs, 17 overall. He's been fantastic. He has been everything and more, and without question, the most dynamic forward, and not only in the Western Conference, but I think in the entire Western Hockey League this season. If he played a full year, folks, he probably would have won the trophy to be honored as the MVP of the league. He's played 44 playoff games this year for Seattle, or in his career, excuse me, 15 goals, 43 assists. In 11 playoff games this spring, he's had six goals, 13 helpers. In just 41 games this year, we see him here in one of them against the Everett Silvertips. He had scored 10 times to chip in with a whopping 69 assists. This is a guy that's got a long future ahead of him in the New York Islanders organization, and I think uh, the best hockey is yet to come from Matthew Barzell this series. And what a big addition for them getting Ethan Bear back. He missed the final three against Kelowna in the Western Conference Championship. His left paw is a little bit sore right now, and there's actually a protective piece over his glove, but we saw what he means with that goal in the second period. Didn't really affect him too much on that one timer on the power play, did it? And he did that a lot this year down in the Emerald City. The defenseman of the year in the Western Hockey League for the second time in three years comes from the Seattle Thunderbirds, and it's Ethan Bear. What a year he had. In 67 games, 28 goals, 42 helpers, half of 
his goals came on the power play, just like this one against the Victoria Royals. Here's another one that he had against the Everett Silvertips. He's a third, he's a player that was unbelievable in the playoffs heading into this series with five goals and 11 assists. Four of his goals came on the power play. He's not known as a big physical defenseman. We saw it there in a good body check, but a player that's been a pretty good complete package. And in his absence, Seattle didn't seem to miss a beat, but boy, are they welcoming him back with open arms. They didn't want to have him watching this one from the press box tonight here in Regina. And Edmonton Oilers fans are getting more and more excited the more they learn of Ethan Bear on defense. Now, Connor Hobbs was up for Defenseman of the Year as well for the Eastern Conference for the Regina Pats. Led all scorers in, among defensemen in the regular season, two points ahead of Ethan for the playoff scoring lead. But what about Connor, who was held off the score sheet in 5-6 in the Eastern Championship? Yeah, and what a matchup we have here tonight. Player of the Year for forward matchup, and now we have Defenseman of the Year matchup with Connor Hobbs, the runner-up with Ethan Bear. And, and Connor Hobbs is one of those guys, you know, he does everything big. You know, he shoots big, he hits big, he's got all kinds of skill. And this is where he's most effective on the power play. He can really rip it when he unloads it. And the Lethbridge Hurricanes did a great job of taking this away by paying the price and blocking the shot. When he's not scoring goals, he has that ability to step up, make a big hit, make a big play. You know, we've seen one of those earlier tonight from Seattle, Connor Hobbs has that ability to change a game with his physical play as well as his stick shooting the puck. One thing that know, everybody notices was Seattle. It's a big group, and they're missing one of their bigger guys and their leading playoff scorer. He and Kiki Bolazar serving a one-game suspension, but what about his addition tomorrow night for game two? Well, that's big for Seattle because uh, this is a guy that really has uh, driven the bus for the T-Birds to start the playoffs. Barzell and Grob did not get a lot of minutes in to start the postseason for Seattle. And in their absence, Kolasar led offensively. And a player that's suspended tonight, Kolasar, a draft pick and signed prospect for the Columbus Blue Jackets, has put up nine goals and 13 helpers in the postseason. Two of his goals have been game winners. And folks, in half of his playoff games, he's had multi-point performances. He's already surpassed his playoff totals from last year when he had seven goals and eight assists. And I had a chat with him here at the Brand Center before the doors were open to the public. He's got a lot of family that have made their way in from his hometown of Winnipeg to watch him. Obviously not tonight, but tomorrow. A pretty mature guy, and boy, when he comes into the lineup, not only does he bring speed and skill, but he is big, and he brings an extra element of size that if the Thunderbirds didn't already have it, they certainly add to that department tomorrow and for the remainder of this series. One of the great stories for Seattle throughout these playoffs has been Carl Stankowski. He was a second-round band to pick in 2015. Yesterday at the WHL Bantam Draft, they went to Victoria to pick Ford Peyton Mount, but the first overall pick, a familiar name in the WHL, Joey, and Caden Gooley, the younger brother of Brendan. And, uh, boy, does this player, based on what he's done the past couple of years in minor hockey in northern Alberta, his future in the Western Hockey League is extremely bright. The Prince Albert Raiders hadn't had a first overall pick in quite some time, but they had to Shearwood Park to select Caden Gooley, 6'1", 174 pounds, and in 30 games this year in Bantam Hockey with the Okanagan Hockey Academy program in Edmonton, 17 goals, 23 assists, 7 health goals come on the power play. Those are pretty impressive stats for a blue line, and you can see he was a captain of his Bantam Hockey team as well. And I know for the Raiders, who had so much luck with his older brother, who they picked, third overall in his draft class in 2012. Uh, they hope the bloodlines are going to continue in the, the right way for their organization. Already a lot of people talking about him being a top prospect for the NHL draft in 2020. And it was so funny, the first round, first round stormed by yesterday morning. We got through it in about 45 minutes, and then the trade started to happen. One of the big ones, Saskatoon sending Mason McCarty back to the Red Deer Rebels, who they had gotten in 2013 in a deal that saw them in a big one, that uh, the Rebels got Nelson Nojay for and for Saskatoon sending one of their leading scorers back to Red Deer. That's a big trade. Well, it is a big trade. You know, the Red Deer Rebels gave him up. They didn't want to give him up when they were running for the Memorial Cup, but Nelson Noje was a really important piece they thought they wanted. Mace McCarty this year for the Saskatoon Blades really did everything he could. Battled a knee injury for a while, was only able to play 47 games. But the Saskatoon Blades down the stretch, everybody kept waiting for them to fall right out of the race after Christmas, and they kept finding a way, finding a way to come in. And Mason McCarty was a huge, huge piece of that offense to give the Saskatoon Blades really a chance to about two weeks left in the season. So Mason McCarty, Brent Sutter knows exactly what he's getting when Mason McCarty coming back.
Jeff Hodgers, Joey Kenward inside the WHL. We'll take a quick time out of the second intermission in Regina. Game one of the WHL championship and some visiting Thunderbirds with a 1-0 lead. Bob Dale Gloves WHL Central is brought to you by Bob Dale Gloves. Found online at BobDaleGloves.com. Hi folks, it's me, Don Taylor, way up here with my friend Murph at Levitt Machinery. They sell, lease, rent, and service all these machines, and they offer certified training. Need a lift? Stack it, breach it, lift it. Levitt. Access 7. Bringing Saskatchewan to you. Details, visit myaccess.ca slash watch local. Coming soon on Access 7 Sports, Regina Rams, Regina Thunder, Western Major Baseball, the Kin Golf Boxing Classic. For all of your local sports, tune to Access 7. Western Conference champion Seattle Thunderbirds with the only goal so far in game one of this championship affair off the stick of Ethan Bear. Real estate's been hard to come by, Kevin, in the first two periods. It certainly has been, and, and we're going to show some examples of the speed from the Thunderbirds, which have caused some turnovers and maybe a little bit of poor puck management on the behalf of the Regina Pats. Right there, that's something that should have been controlled and out. Instead, it turns into another scoring chance against, and then, wow, this is what really turned the emotions in the game. The big thunderous hit from Turner on right on to Adam Brooks, and we looked at this closely a number of times in the intermission. We were looking for head contact. There wasn't any, in our opinion. The question that everybody was wondering was, was it was late? Was it a late hit or not? What we know is it was a hard hit, and nobody wants to see the best player, any player for that matter, out. But Onward and upward, Seattle does a good job defensively. How about the sticks of the defenders? There's six foot five Aaron Hyman defending, making it hard for Regina. And then on the power play, look at the patience. You want the puck in that guy's hands, Barzell to Bear, and Bear takes no, makes no question about it. Look at his head up. It's a scud missile to the top corner. He leads the way for his team here in his last three games. He's got four points, two goals, and two assists. A welcomed addition back. His sixth goal of the playoffs. The Edmonton Oiler, fifth rounder. And that's where we stand. Questionable because of a hand injury or a wrist going in. He missed the final three games of the Western Conference Championship set versus Kelowna. But back tonight and has made an impact with the only goal. No Adam Brooks, as we expected, on the Regina Pats bench. Josh Mahura to Dawson Leadall off the stick of Bear, and Darren DuPont has a souvenir. Levitt Machinery is a proud sponsor of WHL on Shaw. Need a lift? Stack it. Reach it. Lift it. Levitt. We have scoring chances at 13 apiece. Hits 25-22. <laughs> lot of blocks. It's been an entertaining opening night and plenty to come. 
I think the biggest stat there for me is the hits and how even they are. Both teams have made a statement to get on the body and play physical. I thought both teams have done a heck of a job doing that. Been an excellent hockey game. Drop, who drew an assist on the power play goal. Solid jolt from Dawson Liedahl. And Darren was right there when it happened. I saw that one up close, <laughs> fellas, so I've had the most action of the start of this third period, but who has it? Adam Brooks. You guys haven't seen him. He's not on the bench to start the third period. The Regina Pats playing this very close to the vest. Not a lot of information, but I wouldn't expect to see him in this third period. You'll hear from me if that changes, guys. Slobosian in a more prominent role. As a result, on the ice with All and Wagner, Brooks' regular line mates. Enser to Moylanen. Bodied off the puck by All. Enser carries on. Tishka just on side, and his wrister gobbled up by Brown. Well, you talk about the depth, and these are two teams that have a lot of it. And you look from top to bottom on the front line for the Regina Pats, and they've got very capable bodies, not that you ever want to see your best player or one of them out of the lineup. They've got guys that are conditioned to step up, and we talk about Wyatt Slobotion with four goals, 12 points coming into tonight. He's going to play a more prominent role, like you said, Pete, and he's playing the best hockey of his season, regular and postseason, so... He's up for the task, to say the least. Slobosian with a goal and two assists in the series clincher on Sunday in Lethbridge. Adams dumped by shoulder, gets back to his feet. Seen a lot of that and don't expect it to go away. Rare shift for Brian Lochner. Buziak and Holmes. Adams. Brown out to handle it behind the net versus Wedman. He takes a bump, loses his mask, and the reason for the stoppage. Grudge match on. I, again, I said it in the first period. I didn't think Seattle turned down an opportunity at any time when they had an opportunity to finish a check. They did it. But the same is true for the Regina Pats, and now more true than ever. You can feel them stepping their game up physically. There you just saw Wedman take the hat, the helmet of Brown off, but both teams making a point of having physicality a big part of their game. Wedman knocking the mask off Brown as Barzell comes out against Steele. Barzell missed the Tri-City opening round series with illness and now has points in 11 straight playoff games since returning. Barzell spins in front, Niles Brown trying to grab it and finally does. Well, you talk about patience. I'm not so sure this is patience. It's a great play by Barzell. He wraps the puck to Niles. I think he's trying to bank it in the net off of Niles' stick. I'm not sure Niles knows it's coming. There's the spin, there's the shot, but how about the puck? It's open, it's available, and finally. Brown pounces on that thing to cover it up, but a good chance for Seattle because of the good work down low from Barzell. He's throwing the puck to a dangerous area and almost gets rewarded for it. Donovan Niles, six goals, already 18 postseason points, which included a 10-game playoff point streak. Hyman tip in and underneath Brown, who's got it again as Seattle comes close twice in the opening two minutes of period three. Not easy to get the puck through to either of the goaltenders as both teams are doing a good job locking down the lanes, but a good job by Hyman to get the puck through. And every chance the puck gets to Brown, you're gonna find a blue jersey or two on top of it looking for a loose rebound. There's the traffic, there's the shot, and a good box out by Steele and Leadall to give Brown a chance to cover. Slobosian this time as Connor Walchuk leaves his top group out. And Slobosian from Vanskoy just outside of Saskatoon wins the faceoff. Back pass off the stick of Wagner. Bears down on Ottenbright to all. Philip All trying to backhand it in front. Wagner. Intercepted by Grop, who chips and chases. Zabrowski runs some interference. And I 
think you know what to call. Oh, the fans won't like this one bit, but you can see that Brop has got a step. He makes a good play here by putting the puck in. He wants to make Zabrowski turn. We talked about the plus 72 in the regular season. Zabrowski, not an easy guy to play against, but there's Brop putting the puck into an area, and there's Zabrowski just a little bit too much time had passed. He gets on the body with no puck, and there's the interference call. Seattle about to enjoy its fourth straight power play. Regina's had one in the game. And John Paddock's team short-handed again. Well, in a series in, in round three where Seattle was on the receiving end of penalties, they had to kill 42 power plays from the Kelowna Rockets. They only had 28 of their own. They've got four to one here so far in game one against the Regina Pats. Barzell, and they have the lone goal in the game on the power play, courtesy of Ethan Bear, who has it now. To Grop, he and Barzell work the flanks in this 1-3-1 one, one setup. Moylinen in the slot, true in front for net front presence. Grop off the wing, he hit true with it. Bounces to Barzell. Ducking and weaving, his pass. Broken up and Hobbs backhands it down the ice. That's perfect execution from a well-coached team from the Regina Pats. A passive box again, we saw it. Even though they give up a power play goal earlier, they're very disciplined in staying in the middle of the ice and locking it down. Barzell takes a couple of solid whacks from Slobosian. Skate the stick. Barzell from Coquitlam. Misses Groff. Can Wagner get to it? No, he can't now. He might get in behind Bear. Wagner! Groff again by Stankowski. All the kid has done is make all the big ones. Well, just when you forget that he's even in the game because he hasn't been tested very much here in the last 10 or 15 minutes, he's letting us all know that he's here. How good has the kid been? Unbelievable. And Wagner with anticipation. A good job by Liedahl to get that puck to him. Wagner gets a step, and he spreads the five hole out of Stankowski, which is exactly what he wants to do. He goes backhand, forehand, but Stankowski competes battles, and look at him make the save, and again, no rebound. On fire to say the least look at the paddle to take away the five hole the pats have four shorthanded goals in the playoffs wagner has three of them wagner with five shorthanded goals in the regular season he had seven the year before which led all the western hockey league the league record by the way you have to go back to the mid 80s and it is 13. unbelievable not easy to do and the thing about Wagner that I like so much is he's productive and he scores shorthanded goals, takes care of the defensive end first. It's his sense of anticipation and, of course, his speed that leads to shorthanded goals. So dangerous. Tishka, 30 seconds to go in the power play to Niles. For Enser. Enser fans and a shot, and now Lidl. Breaking away with Steele and Hobbs. Cuts to the middle. Hobbs! Stankowski again. In 1974, a goaltender named Staniowski led the Regina Pats to the Memorial Cup. Tonight, a recently turned 17-year-old named Stankowski is putting on quite a show. Well, how about the show on that save again as the Pats weave and zig and zag on the entry and Hobbs finds himself with the puck and a lot of time to shoot from a dangerous spot. Stankowski again, blocker save, controls the rebound. I'm sounding like a parrot here tonight. I think I've said that a few times. Save, rebound control. His <laughs> save off of Wagner in the first of the incredible variety. Not quite Stu Skinner from the Leftridge Regina series, but not far from. Moylinen. Zabrowski out of the penalty box, so Regina kills off another. Seattle one for four with a man advantage. Grop. Swept off his stick, now he pokes it. All intercepted. Grop, a quick wrist shot to test Brown. Turner Ottenbright. Wedman, his time and space taking it away by Scholler. And here's Wagner to Philip Hall from Sweden. Jan Schoping, I believe, is the pronunciation. Not spelt like that. 
He has it again. Mahura looks for a lane. Feeds it to all with that six foot four inch frame. Tripped up by Bear and Bear comes away with it somewhat dangerously in front. Kept in by Lochner, a 16 year old from Windsor, Colorado. Lochner keeps it in and Stankowski hangs on. What a great job by Ethan Bear defensively. We talk about him so much and the offensive side of things, but he's really taking care of his 200-foot game, and, and he's gotten so much better. Perhaps the biggest difference from last year to this year, we saw down low, Bear separates the man for the puck against Phil Ball, who you talked about being 6'4", and 215 pounds. Not an easy thing to do, but so impressed on the 200-foot game in all three zones with Ethan Bear. As the lone goal is six, he scored 28. 14 of those 28 were on the power play. Connor Walchuk talks about the teammate that he is and the, the student of the game that he is. When you, when he, Connor Walchuk talks, he's got the undivided attention and that ga glare from Ethan Bear. He's listening, he's sponging on every word. He wants to get better daily, and he certainly has. And it's one thing to make a difference on the ice. The difference he's making in his own First Nations community, you can't say enough about. Well, when they sell 500 tickets in this building, when Ethan Bear comes to town, what else do you have to say? It is a great story. It sure is. Great family. Met them last year in Brandon at the league final. Wrist shot by Niles, blocked by Harrison. Here's leadoff. 11 postseason markers for Nick Henry. Henry wanted to send it in deep but drop intercepted to austin strand strand actually and austin wagner were bantam teammates with the calgary north star sabers they know each other and you and you look at strand and and the acquisition of him just before the deadline and you look at the guys that seattle lost pete jared hoff and Jared Smith, guys that are big bodies. Jared Hoff, six foot five. Smith was six foot four. And what did they do? They went out and replaced him with a guy like Austin Strand from the Red Deer Rebels, six foot three. Aaron Hyman, they got him early in the season for a third round pick, six foot five. So I think it's fair to say that Seattle likes their big rangy D-men. Couple of Calgary youngsters, Strand and Hyman. And in the Bantam draft this past Wednesday, Russ Farwell was saying how he was pleased they got three more big D-men in their selections. Russ Farwell, the general manager, way back in 87 and 88 when the Medicine Hat Tigers won back-to-back -back league championships and Memorial Cups. It's been around the league a long time. Saw his team lose in five to Brandon in last year's title series as Adams nearly wrapped one home in his hometown. Here's Wagner racing in. Wagner drives the net. Stankowski stayed with him, and now Wagner gives him a little extra business. Wagner in front for all, just failed to make the connection. Hobbs has to wait. Does and clears it in, rims it. Tishka first on it. The smooth skating defender to Alexander True bounces it into the mitt of Brown. Well, the details in Wagner's game aside from the speed, I thought that he made a point to get on the body, but how has he changed the game with his speed? Here's another foot race. He spotted out right about 25 feet on this one. He just wanted to make it interesting, but wins the race, gets the puck, and takes it to the net hard. Here's another look. This guy's a cheat on skates. Unbelievable. Good job building a wall and taking it to Stankowski, and a nice job by the youngster to hold his ground. Has 14 in the playoffs. He's had the best Regina opportunities on night one of this series. No question about it. He's a guy that... Dave Struess says when he keeps his game simple, he's at his best. You don't need to make things complicated when you have that type of speed. Put the puck into smart positions, win races, and let the rest take place. Scored 30 during the regular season. Plus 52. He's plus 15 in the postseason, which is second in all of the playoffs. Bear, this time a wrist shot. Blocked in front. Holmes can't clear it in deep. Here comes Lochner. 
Brian Lochner, block, he'll get another chance. Lochner holding it, still with it. Down is Kishka, Harrison, backhander, it's loose in the crease. They lost sight of it. Oh, the fans aren't happy about that because the puck was in the blue paint all alone. What a turn of events. There's so much going on as Jared Tiska initially blocks the initial shot and he is down and out. And then Lochner does a good job getting the puck up high to Harrison. And how about the compete in the battle again from Stankowski? He's got bodies falling on him all over the place and he's only concerned about one thing. Where's the puck? Said it several times during the Lafferidge series. I think Lochner will certainly hit the score sheet a lot by the time his Western Hockey League career is over. Third rounder from Windsor, Colorado. Played in the U16 program for the Thunderbirds in Colorado last year. Teammates with Nolan Foote from the Kelowna Rockets. Is he a good one? Yep, no doubt. Cool. On the topic of players who are gonna score a lot in <laughs> their Western Hockey League days. His <laughs> career might not get to 19. We could be talking about him being in the top 10 in three years. He's got the late birthday as well, so his draft year isn't for another two years as well, Nolan Foot. Yeah, he's a 2019 draft eligible. Zabrowski relays it towards lead all in steel. Niles off the boards, Brock nearly picked the pocket of Hobbs. And Hill send it off Ottenbright's glove. Seattle hanging on to a one-goal lead. Here's Matthew Wedman by himself. A pretty good move on Wagner, who is back. 11-18 to go in regulation time. The Ethan Bear power play goal standing tall. Well, perhaps one of the most important players on the ice tonight, the goaltender for the Seattle Thunderbirds, tested early, and this is a guy that only played in seven regular season games, the 16-year-old, throughout the course of the season. He had to turn away 197 shots in round three against Kelowna. He's been fantastic tonight. He doesn't look like a 16-year-old. He's played with poise and confidence, and to me tonight, he has been the difference. Help Team Alberta to the... Western Canada under 16 Challenge Cup title last October. Now stops Labosian on a wraparound. Wedman without his stick. All to Harrison. Good hand eye by All, the Ottawa fourth rounder for Wagner. Back to Philip All. A blast! Nearly found the short side. Looked like Stankowski just got a piece. All hit the sweet spot on that one. That puck took off. What a shot. He has four in the playoffs. Does Philip All a goal and an assist in the clincher in game six in Lethbridge. Robbie Holmes, nifty backhand try to Lochner. John Paddock rewarding that line, Buziak, Holmes, and Lochner, who have given them a couple of quality shifts. And the building back involved, too. Versus Harsh, couple of H's. Holmes, wrap around backhand by Buziak. Stankowski continues to have every answer. And another scrum. Stankowski has yet to allow one. All, David is all here. And the outside of the ice, it remains 1-0 in game one. Tony Romans, serving its signature ribs for 40 years. With an expanded menu including steaks, chicken, and seafood, Tony Romans is a family dining destination. Tony Romans, legendary for ribs, famous for so much more. Hey. 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 Hey, 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 looks like you have time.
Let's take a two-minute test and find out your risk of getting type 2 diabetes. Hi, folks. It's me, Don Taylor, way up here with my friend Murph. At Levitt Machinery, they sell, lease, rent, and service all these machines, and they offer certified training. Need a lift? Stack it. Breach it. Lift it. Levitt. Well, there's been no shortage of opportunities from both teams at both ends of the ice, but the difference tonight is the one power play goal scored by Ethan Bear, and it starts off of the stick from Matthew Barzell. Look at the job net front by Alexander True. The big frame at 6-3 provides the screen. There's the pass, and how about the release? Top corner. It, a perfectly placed shot with a screen net front. That's the difference. That's where we stand right now at the halfway point of the third. one nothing for the Thunderbirds. Down to Darren Dupont as well as Carl Stankowski. Calm, cool, collected after game six. I don't know if you guys can see me ducking around the officials, but after game number six, the win over Kelowna to seal the deal in that series and advance to the WHL Championship Series, it was allowed. Noisy, excited bus ride back to Seattle. Where was Carl Stankowski? Fast asleep. So not much gets to the young netminder in these playoffs, and nothing has gotten past him tonight. Maybe no more important skill to have as a goaltender than emotional control, and he seems to have an early jump on that at 16. Coincidental minors, by the way, to Lochner and Vulcan on the scrum. Barzell weaving. Stripped by Wagner. His pass, and that was not an easy save as it was deflected off the stick and gave Stankowski fits. No easy shift against Austin Wagner when he's on the ice. You have to respect him and you respect his speed. And he uses it so effectively as he creates the turnover there. He takes it from Matthew Barzell. I'll take that. Thank you very much. And you're right. A, a deflected shot on net. It changes direction and speed. And Stankowski. It's got to be sharp to make the save. Mahura hits Austin Strand. Strand comes away with it against Wagner. If you're the LA Kings watching Wagner tonight, you love what you've seen. Pretty happy with the value of your 99th pick. Fourth round in 2015. Barzell, a first round pick in that year of the New York Islanders. Versus Mahura. Still hanging on, finds Ottenbright. That didn't miss the mark by much. Here's Steele. But at the end of a shift. And now Steele having words with Ottenbright. When they shift down low, you talk about Matthew Barzell. And again, you see him, and he's we all know he's great with the puck. He's a good skater, an amazing skater, amazing puck possession. But we've seen him add to his game, too. His, he plays with some weight on him as well. Here again, he sheds the pressure, but when the bodies are on him, like right there, he's exceptionally good at staying on his edges, protecting the puck. Great examples of it. Makes the play up high and creates a scoring chance by getting the puck after winning battles in the trenches. Ottenbright with a... I don't know what the right adjective is, but one you won't forget that has Adam Brooks out of the game. Wrist shot by True. Tested Brown. Back comes Slobosian trying to get away from Bear. There'll be a penalty. Well, Ethan Bear is going to argue here that Slobosian, Slobosian, pardon me, grabs his arm and then falls. Regardless, it's a heck of a shift by Slobosian. Pardon me, Slobosian. Easy for me to say. <laughs> but watch him here. He takes off. Bear does a really good job. You decide who grabs who. There's Bear. That's pretty, that's a, that's a, the right call, no doubt about it, as Sabotian has to step on him, and the Pats are going to have a power play here, and an important power play here. 8.37 left, down by one in the third. And it will be four on three. Remember when Ethan Bear scored in the second period, it was on a four right on, on three. 8.37 to go in regulation. one nothing Seattle in game one of the best of seven Western Hockey League Championship Series. Pats with a face-off win. Tee it up for Hobbs. Back to Mahura with Steele and Leadall. Sam Steele to the middle. Mahura! And Stankowski reads it. 
Well, a good job by Steele. I think everybody on the ice is anticipating Hobbs that he's going to get the puck. He's the right-handed shot, setting, waiting on that back door on his one time where the puck goes to Mahura, possibly in an attempt to catch them off guard. A good shot on net and a nice blocker saved by Stankowski. Face-off win for True. Understand a lot of NHL teams taking a look at True. Eight goals and 16 points in 14 games coming into tonight. Pats working four on three, looking for an equalizer. Hobbs hit lead all and it hurt him. Stays out there, has room in front. Steele looks at him off the outside of the net. Pressure, lead all, cuts to the middle. Hobbs, he Did he need that and did they need that? You got the sense it was just a matter of time and you can see Hobbs rallying the troops. He's a passionate guy and what a shot that he has. You can see him, he is ecstatic. We talked about him only having points in one of six games against Lethbridge in the third round. That was in game four with a goal and two and he makes a statement with this shot, doesn't he? As they catch Seattle on a two-on-one down low, good job waiting by Liedahl. He shows patience and outweighs Harsh and he lays the pass right into the wheelhouse. Well, and the rest, you can see. What a shot from Hobbs. He sizzles one past Dankowski. Power play goal, we're at 1-1. 7.49 remaining in a 1-1 tie. Connor Hobbs with his fifth of the playoffs on the power play. Both teams have one. Zabrowski clears it to Wagner. Wagner's pass, good take by Slavosian, ridden off by Niles. Here comes All. All kicked away by Stankowski. And now Barzell, will he supply some magic down the stretch? Slavosian. Backhands it for Wagner. Probably been the best pad in the game. I would agree. Austin Wagner versus Ottenbright. Connor Hobbs has tied it. He sent this place into high stirrups. And, and they really needed something to feel good about here. They were down on themselves, I think, a little bit. They got outplayed perhaps in the second a bit. Lost their captain. And, well, there's some energy injected in this building now. Braden Buziak. Intercepted by Enser. Any team would benefit from having Scott Enser. So reliable. Such a great two-way centerman. Lochner. Back to the line. Scholler. Dangerous pass. Got away with it. Well, you talk about Scott Enser. He reminds me of a, of a Marchant from, from Boston. Small, torquey. He's got skill but extremely hard to play against. He, you're not going to have an easy shift when he's on the ice, ever. Chopped away from Tyler Adams. Off the bench is Steele. Steele and Leadall draw the assist on the Hobbs equalizer at 12-11. Wedman to Ottenbright. Blocked by Henry. True down low. Protects it against Zabrowski. True comes away with it. Back to Hyman. Wrist shot blocked. Hyman with it again. Auden Bright tipped in front but didn't make it to the net. Uh, this is fantastic. Guys paying prices in lanes. There's guys limping off to the bench after their shifts, blocking shots, taking hits to make plays. That's playoff hockey. Had a few people come to our booth even after the first period going, this is what a championship series should resemble. I don't think anyone's disappointed. The best of the best, there's no doubt about it tonight. All oh, and Barzell, nice work defensively for the Thunderbirds. To Strand, off of Wedman. And Barzell with time to operate, under five to go in the third. Bear in the second on the power play, Hobbs, 
the two highest scoring defensemen in the league during the regular season. Hodge with 31, Bear with 28. Head to head with the D-man of the year and the runner up. Head to head with the player of the year and Steele and the runner up and Barzell. Let's say there's some talent on the sheet tonight. Lahura as Steve Kunawalczyk's crew is changing. Walker chips and chases against Tishka. Good work by Tishka. But Buziak keeps it in. Holmes versus Enser. And there's an example of what Enser gives you. That's yep. a great play. Vulcan in hot pursuit, centered it right through the crease. Back comes Robbie Holmes. And now he'll shoot it in and head off. Enser loses it to lead all, pulls him down. And it's offside. When we talk about the details in the postseason and what it takes to win, take some of this. Sacrifice the body to block a shot. There's Henry blocking one. Lido, how good has he been tonight? Taking hits to make plays, blocking shots, selling out, sacrificing the body. You can't make it easy for the puck to get to your netminder. In the playoffs, that's what it's all about. We've seen two teams lay it on the line in that regard tonight. And Regina lost their captain in the second period on a humongous hit delivered Scott Stevens like by Turner Ottenbright and is not returned. That's probably the best way you can describe it is Scott Stevens like it. He stopped him in his tracks. There's the hit. That is a punishing scary hit. Ottenbright and to me that gave Regina every opportunity or every reason to fold up the tent seeing their captain on the ice like that. They haven't done it. They've clawed their way back into this one. Found a way to beat Stankowski with 1-1. One, one. Donovan Niles went to the net and he had some room and now Brown is uncomfortable. He's hurt. Tyler Brown is hurt as Henry goes to the net. Back comes Niles. Lead off. Oh, Brown looks really uncomfortable. Barzell to Strand, into the slot. His wrister whistled wide. Seattle looks for a go-ahead tally. A wrister by Adams missed. And Zabrowski wants to clear it out, he does. Stankowski will be forced and keep an eye on the Regina goalie. Well, both goalies have had to deal with a lot of pressure coming towards them throughout the course of the night. Here's the puck arriving at the net, and look at Niles as he goes to the net hard, and then he makes contact with Brown. You can see Brown's head lash back. He was uncomfortable. And he was still down on one knee when the play goes the other way, but there it is. Niles goes. Looked to me like it might have been an awkward knee bend or something like that. It took him a while to recover. Here's the puck 200 feet away, and you can tell that Tyler Brown is not feeling very good, but he looks like he's back at it. Back to his feet. How many twists and turns can you have in game one? And we're a long way from complete. Hyman under three to go. 1-1 one, one tie in game one. Hobbs who tied it in this third on the power play. Wagner off the arm of Ottenbright. And all clears it cross corner. Regina changes. Out comes that Buziak line again. John Paddock has really leaned on them in the third. They barely saw any time yep. in the first two periods. They've provided energy and they've had the puck in the offensive zone a majority of their time. Zabrowski head Buziak loose in front. Hyman. Adams blew a tire. Kept in. Buziak. Holmes bumped with Enser and the much smaller one wins the battle and then Harrison jumped up. Is Wedman onside? Yes. Spins. Deflected over top of the net. Close call at the pass end. 
Wedman protects it. The 17-year-old from Edmonton back to Tishka in the shooting lane is Lochner. Tishka to his partner, Bear, always dangerous. Wedman now, both benches on their feet. True, a rocket over top of the net. Bear, Brown stopped it, still in the zone. Bear again, that hit a body and just went wide. Relentless pressure by the T-Birds. Blocked in front, but they can't clear. They finally do, the Pats. What a shift by the Thunderbirds. That last shot towards Tyler Brown deflected. There was net. If it's on net, that's in. Steele can't clear. Drop. Drop by Brown. Sensational stop. Ottenbright tipped wide. Lead all aces it. And the Pats will probably take their time out. Well, you talk about saves, and you always hear us talking about timely saves. You want to see an example of one? Well, this is one right here. As Seattle has the Pats absolutely hemmed in. Groff, who can shoot the puck, 35 goals on the regular season. He finds himself all alone in tight. Here's another look. Point blank. Brown closes to five hole, puts the rebound into the corner to keep the Pats alive here. Under a minute left in the third. And then how about Alexander True? He put that puck where he wants it. That's got top corner written all over it. Misses by inches. We're still knotted at one with 20 seconds. Puck remains in the Pat zone and now dumped off the glass by Steele. Steele, a good outlet to lead off. Dying seconds, lead off. As was the case one year ago in Brandon. In game one, 60 minutes. Not enough to determine a winner. Well, deja vu for the Seattle Thunderbirds. You look at their last year's first three games in the final against Brandon. The first two in Brandon, they lost in overtime. In game three in Seattle, they lost in overtime. All by the score of three to two. What a sequence of events here tonight is... The Regina Pats, to me, show huge character in coming back. They were deflated, and they found a way to get a big power play goal to, goal to even it at 1-1. One, one. What a beauty 60 minutes we just saw. Only seems fitting. Overtime required. Connor Hobbs, his power play goal, the reason we're headed, Daxtra. Back with more. Hope you're enjoying it. I know we are. Before and after the game, Tony Romas offers casual family dining. Tony Romas, a family destination, legendary ribs, and famous for so much more. With the scholarship program that WHL um, produces for us players is, is huge, and it helps us just kind of not worry about the money aspect of it, but just focus on the school and, and your hockey, and um, makes it a lot easier on a student for sure. Coming soon on Access 7 Sports, Regina Rams, Regina Thunder, Western Major Baseball, the King Golf Boxing Classic. For all of your local sports, tune to Access 7. Access 7 Sports presents the Regina Pats and the Seattle Thunderbirds in the WHL Championship. Watch exclusive full game coverage only on Access 7. Join the conversation. Tweet at MyAccess underscore CA. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to find out what's new on Access 7. Come join a Canada 150 celebration as the RCMP Heritage Centre presents the Tattoo Royale. Two spectacular performances May 23rd and 24th featuring the world-famous RCMP musical ride. Music, dance, masked pipe and marching bands, police and military displays, and an array of performances and entertainment for the whole family. A Canada 150 celebration, Tattoo Royale, featuring the musical ride. Presented by the RCMP Heritage Centre May 23rd and 24th. Tickets now on sale at the Brand Centre box office or online at Ticketmaster.ca. Coming soon on Access 7 Sports, Regina Rams, Regina Thunder, Western Major Baseball, the King Golf Boxing Classic. For all of your local sports, tune to Access 7. 
Tied at one as we head to overtime here in Regina. Game number one of the Western Hockey League's championship series. As we welcome you back inside, Darren DuPont with you and joined with the assistant of the Regina Pats, Brad Haroff. And Brad, uh, at one point, did you ever think that this kid wasn't going to allow any goals at the other end of the ice? Yeah, we're a real confident group. We scored a goal. I think we've been scoring all year long, so there's no sense in getting down. They play a lot of good... Uh, they play some good defensive structure. We just got to keep on getting to the paint and just find those loose pucks. What have you seen and learned about the Thunderbirds through 60 minutes? Well, they're really good on the D side of the puck. They really close down the middle of the ice, and they play five guys in every zone. So I think we just have to continue to get to the inside and just fight through their checks. They're holding us up, getting the paints. So we just got to continue to fight. Up. I just fight off for box outs, and, we'll, and I think we'll be fine. How tough is it managing the lineup without Adam Brooks? You've done that at times already in this postseason. It's playoff hockey, so I think every team goes through it. Uh, so we're not going to make any excuses. I just, uh, just keep on just going ahead and just whatever happens, happens. Brad, appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you. Brad Haroff of the Regina Pats here as we get set for overtime. And to take us through the intermission, let's go over to the guys and Andy Neal. All right. Thank you kindly, Darren. Big thanks to Brad Haroff for joining us as well in the intermission of OT. And like Peter said, just like last year, in fact, the first three games of the 2016 WHL Championship went to overtime and Brandon won all three of those. But a doozy so far tonight, Joey. It's been a fantastic hockey game for 60 minutes. You know, three different games in many respects over the course of three separate periods. A pretty tentative opening 20. I don't think any Everybody should be surprised at that considering they haven't seen one another since October. You had a big hit, you had a power play goal in the second period and obviously a little bit of controversy gets the fans riled up. And then into the third period, I give the Pats a lot of credit. Uh, they've seen this movie before where they faced adversity in hockey games that have had to come from behind on numerous occasions so far in these WHL playoffs and a nice power play finish after a four on three. Matt advantage expired, Jeff. They were able to get a power play goal from Connor Hobbs, and that's forced this game to a little extra hockey here on the Prairies. Yeah, and you know what? Really, in that third period, it almost felt about uh, the halfway through that, you know, the game was going to end one nothing. It really, and, and to me, you know, Lochner, Buziak, and Holmes, the line for Regina Pats came out, had some big shifts, really turned that momentum around. Then it went four on four, then it went four on three in that power play. And, you know, Dawson Lido makes a great play on the pass down from Steele, has great patience. And, you know, Connor Hobbs, he steps up and makes a huge play. You know, with Adam Brooks out, you know, you look at Sam Steele, and you look at your big guys to get things turned around. Like I said, I think that third line did a great job of generating some momentum. And then you need your guys to go out and finish. And Connor Hobbs, right place at the right time. Dawson Lido, all kind of patience. That's what you need from your 20-year-old in those situations. Makes a big-time play to give the pass a chance. What about the lift, Jeff, that Seattle probably gets after that final two minutes of regulation time when it was all in the Regina end? Well, it was, and it's hard to believe that the puck stayed out. You know, Tyler Brown made some unbelievable saves. You look at Ryan Groff, you give him the puck in the, in the slot like that, and Brown comes up huge. Ethan Bear, some great shots on the point firing from all over so you know Tyler Brown you know he looked like he may be laboring maybe favoring that one leg he took a hit late in that third period but he came back strong and made some huge saves in the last minute how, how nervous do you think John Paddock is with Tyler Brown after the collision with Donovan Niles I I don't think a ton considering the big time stop he made off of Groff when it was in the dying minutes of regulation and usually for Groff who scored a lot of goals in this league that's been money in the bank for him in his Western Hockey League career. I think that probably not only settles Brown down, but more importantly, it settles the players in front of him down because they could see him laboring in pain after that uh, altercation in the crease. And uh, I, I think that what does him some good is he gets a chance to rest here, get a little fluids into him, and, and along with both teams here, uh, a, a well-deserved breather here before we start overtime. And Carl Stankowski again wow. continues to amaze. The one got by him, really no chance on the Connor Hobbs shot, but the youngster doing it again for Thir Seattle. 31 saves for this hockey team, and you can't fault him on that power play goal against. You know, we're talking about something this league hasn't seen in a long time. I think you've got to go all the way back to the year 2000 when the Kootenai Ice wound up winning the WHL championship and going to their first ever appearance at the MasterCard Memorial Cup. And you know who their goaltender was back then? A 16-year-old rookie by the name of Dan Blackburn. And obviously the Ice didn't go on to win the WHL crown that, or they, they did win the league title, they didn't win the Memorial Cup, but that's asking a lot for a kid that is now technically 17, but he's in his first full season 
of eligibility for WHL play, and he looks well mature beyond his year's weight. He's not only played tonight, but this is what the Thunderbirds and their fans have been seeing all spring. Oh, really, even go back to that first period, he made some huge saves. Nick Henry with a one-timer in the slot. Philip All had a one-timer in the slot. You know, Brooks and Steele Steel doing a good job distributing the puck in the third period. Move on, Austin Wagner with a shorthanded breakaway. And the thing is, it doesn't seem to phase him. He just looks like calm. He expects it. He makes the save. Okay, game on. Keep playing. You know, it's my first time seeing him play live, and I can't tell you how impressed I am with his composure and just the ability he has to come through in big moments. Regina assistant coach Brad Haroff talked about trying to get to the inside of Seattle's defense. What's impressed you about that Thunderbirds back then, Jeff? Well, probably the size and their mobility. You know, you look at them, 6'3", 6'4", and you think, okay, they're, they're tall, they're lanky, they're not going to be able to move the puck, but it'll slow a foot. Not the case. So many times that puck comes from down low and up high, they're able to walk the line. They got their heads up. You know, they've had a few shots blocked, but they've always got their head up. They're moving their foot. They're shooting for sticks. They're shooting for tips. You've seen Turner Rottenbright with a shot off the backboards on a, on a set play looking for a rebound. You know, this Seattle D, a lot more offensive skill than given credit for. I think Ethan Bear takes up all the credit for the offense, and don't get me wrong, he deserves every accolade he gets. But I think there are so many guys that are underrated. Kishka, you know, he's a guy up in the play all night can skate. He took a shot off the foot, wondered if he was coming back. He came back in the third period, didn't seem to miss a beat, but just his speed, you know, Hyman's ability to play defense. Very, very impressed with the way the Seattle defense plays. Speaking of speed, Austin Wagner. Uh, a lot of it to burn. And boy, he's just fun to watch in person. You know, so many of us have only been able to watch him on television to see this kid live up close he is one of the fastest players that's ever played in this league over the course of its 50-year history i'm not kidding and jeff you had a lot of guys that you played with in your day uh, they would have been just looking around where oh he's already behind me um not to say that you were one of them jeff but uh austin wagner has definitely been for my money the most dangerous player on the ice as far as a forward is concerned for regina and he's a little unlucky not to have found the back of the net so far and where he is at his most dangerous it seems in these playoffs has been when his team has been shorthanded he's had a couple of golden opportunities tonight stankowski has been equal to the task but uh this is a player that you would think with his speed he's not going to be kept in check for that much longer well we're in uh, southeast saskatchewan and uh, yorkton is starting to become the hotbed we didn't get a chance to talk about this in the second intermission but nine players drafted from yorkton you know the area well from spy hill ochapoesa many people here for ethan bear and his performance turner otten right also from southeast saskatchewan but uh, yorkton really producing some players right now yeah, they have, and it's really a credit to the people back there. You know, Saskatchewan people, you know, in the Manitoba Prairie, people, they like to give back. And, you know, all the guys that I know that have came back from either playing pro, junior A, triple A, midget, they all get involved in the minor hockey. They really do. They give back. They spend their time coaching. And the one thing that we still have in the smaller towns, every town that has a 1,000 or more people, there's still a hockey rink there. So there's all kinds of ice time. You start playing hockey at eight and under, you're playing 60 minute games. You're playing full games, all kinds of ice. We have people willing to go down, open up the rinks at night for the kids to skate all they want, play shinny or whatever. And I think that's something that's really lost because you know what, the most enjoyable time you have with a kid, you remember, it's when you go on the ice, you're not doing drills, you're not being coached, you're not being told what to do, you just go out and play. And that's the most enjoyable thing. And I think the kids in our area still get to do that and enjoy it. And I know he's not one to take the credit, but Jeff Audgers deserves a lot of the credit. Both of his sons, John and Dakota, went into the Western Hockey League, had very solid careers in this league, and now are pursuing their collegiate activities uh, in CIS schools and you've got a lot of good coaches that you work with in your area uh, so that's a big time credit to you but also the people that don't get nearly the credit they deserve for uh, being able to develop the nine kids out of that one program for a bantam draft that's quite impressive so what are we looking for for overtime to start things off here in game one well I think for the Regina Pats you know, you, you want to come out. It's your building. You want to create that momentum. And, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if it's in Seattle Thunderbirds' minds or not, but they had a couple very tough losses on the road last year in overtime when it started. If you remember, Jace Howerluck scores from behind the goal line, you know, for the overtime winner in game one. And then you have a shot off the end boards in game two, comes over the net, and it's batted out of the air. 
you know, to win game two. So I'm not sure if that plays into Seattle's thought process or not. But And Regina has already won the last time they were in overtime in this very building. They did it in game two against the Lethbridge Hurricanes in the Eastern Conference Final. John Paddock will definitely be reminding them of that. And I'm sure Steve Connell Walchuk is saying to the players in his room that were there 12 months ago, guys, you know what it takes. Sometimes it's a lucky bounce, if not anything else, and maybe Seattle's overdue for one of those. Well, I, I am curious. This is the fifth time in the last six WHL championships that a combatant, one of the combatants, has returned to the championship series. And the last three have won it who lost it the year prior. So how much does experience matter now for Seattle? I think it's huge. And we talked with Connor Walchuk and his coaching staff after their uh, very up-tempo and upbeat morning skate today here in Regina and how can you not use it to your advantage you're a team that's representing your conference for the second time in as many years you have that bitter taste in your mouth after not coming in with any hardware for your efforts in the league finale last year on home ice they'd love nothing more in a 2-3-2 format to get this first one in the bag it would put them in the driver's seat but they know they've got a tough test because this building although it's a little tame right now guys it'll be fired up when they come back onto the ice. This is the 12th overtime in the WHL playoffs. We'll see who the hero is. Upstairs, we go to the men calling it Bill Vardius. Kevin Sawyer, take it away. Great job as always, gentlemen. Seattle is familiar, Kevin. If they rewind the clock, they lost the first three games of last year's Ed Chenoweth Cup Championship Series to Brandon all in overtime. Well, that experience can't hurt. They're conditioned to be in these scenarios, and they'll remember what that felt like, no doubt about that. And I really think that they did a real nice job in the third period. Down low, we saw in the first period, Regina put the puck below the goal line. Seattle did the same thing in the third. Pucks to the net, and Brown had to contend with all sorts of bodies. And then Wagner, I, I really think he was the best player for the white jerseys throughout the course of 60 minutes. And there was a lot of pushback from Regina, and it went really back and forth from end to end. We go at one end, one great scoring opportunity. And look at the foot race by Wagner. you got to be kidding me. He had 25 feet to regain there, and he does it. Back and forth we go. Opportunities missed by inches, I thought, from the Regina pass before this happened. Look at the behind the back. No look pass right there from Steele. One great pass. Patience. Pause from Liedahl. Two great passes. Led to a fantastic shot on the four on three power play. That even did at one. And then playoff hockey. Blocked shots. Hand to price. That's what it takes to win. We saw a great job defensively from the Pats. A couple breakdowns, and how about that late save by Brown to keep this game tied at one? Connor Hobbs with 7.49 to go on a power play, his fifth of the playoffs. The reason that we've arrived here, both goaltenders have been excellent, and underway is overtime. Regina 1-3 one and three this spring in overtimes. Seattle 1-1. One and one. Barzell has their only overtime winner and tries to end it early. So does Bear. Rebound. They score! Donovan Niles, 14 seconds in. And Seattle takes a one-game to nothing lead. Oh, you talked about their start to last year's final in Brandon well they wasted no time 14 seconds to be exact to make sure that they changed their fate here in game one of the Western Hockey League final and it comes from the entry from Matthew Barzell with puck possession we've seen it so much and wow they got this puck to the net quickly Barzell uses the D-man as a screen the rebound from Brown goes back out Bear puts it off of the crossbar and I'm not sure I think it was Donovan Niles who tapped it in there how about his postseason Donovan Niles coming into tonight six goals 18 points he has been playing the best hockey of his season here in the postseason and he capitalizes on that crossbar shot from Bear to put this one home the young man from Grenfell Saskatchewan after a laser off the crossbar by Ethan Bear Niles is there to tap it in his seventh of the playoffs and the Thunderbirds strike early in extra time and lead the Western Hockey League Championship Series one game to nothing. A happy Thunderbird bunch back to wrap up what was a fantastic game one, our post-game show after this. Before and after the game, Tony Roma's offers casual family dining, 
Tony Romans, a family destination, legendary ribs, and famous for so much more. With the scholarship program the WHL um, produces for us players is, is huge and it helps us just kind of not worry about the money aspect of it but just focus on the school and then your hockey and um, makes it a lot easier on a student for sure. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take but for many just getting hold of a stick is the hardest part. That's why I'm a proud member of the Horatio Alger Association of Canada through generous scholarships the association gives hard-working young Canadians who have faced great adversity a shot at a higher education. Beginning this year, our scholarships will be available to students in financial need in every corner of Canada. To learn more, visit RachelAlger.ca. Hey, Mr. Ricky. Boys, I want you to meet someone. Outstanding athlete, a former second lieutenant in the United States Army, and your new second baseman, Jackie Robinson. Hi, gentlemen. You may know about the for you. And now batting for the Royals. Le deuxième vue, the second baseman, Jackie Robinson. Record numbers of cheering Montrealers helped Jackie Robinson break baseball's color bar that year. He never forgot the city that launched his journey to baseball's Hall of Fame. Well, we thought we might be in for a long overtime, but 14 seconds in, Donovan Niles, the winner, and Carl Sankowski, 31 save performance. He's with Darren Dupont. Thank you very much, Andy. Carl, you were just asking me a minute ago who scored the goal. What's it like? And take me through that moment in overtime. Man, it's crazy. Uh, the guys played great in front of me tonight, and, uh, you know, Donnie found a way to bury it, and it's, it's exciting. This is our first chance to get to see you live in action, and when you're in the U.S. division, fans up here and through the West Wing, you don't get to see on our show either. So how have you been able to do what we've been watching you do from a distance and make this magic through the postseason? You know, I couldn't have done any of this without my teammates. They're always there for me. They're blocking shots, letting me see pucks, and... Uh, I'm just trying to do my part. How were you ready to go when Ryland Toth wasn't? You know, I, uh, I learned a lot from this year. I, uh, with me uh, not playing too much, I just I kept on watching him, learning a lot from him, and I, uh, I felt co good coming in. How do you stay composed through, you know, at such a young age, through a long postseason run? I mean, you guys won the first two series in sweeps. You had a tough series with, with Kelowna. How are you able to not get too high, get too low during this ride? Uh, it's just one puck at a time for me. I just I don't focus on the full game, just one puck at a time. Some people talk about you're a smaller goaltender. How do you compensate uh, in the goal? Because it doesn't seem to be an issue. Yeah, I just try to I try to make up for speed and uh, the athleticism. This is obviously an, a, a big moment for this team. You weren't here last year, but the three overtime losses the guys talked about, how much is this a second chance and a chance to, to do things right here? for this group in the locker room. Yeah, not a lot of teams get second chances, and uh, especially for our veterans, it's huge. It's uh, another shot for them, and uh, trying to win it. Carl, keep doing what you're doing, man. It's been a treat to watch. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Carl Stankowski, the game's first star. Andy? All right, thanks very much, Darren. Congrats to Carl Stankowski on the win tonight. And Jeff, you were able to hear that interview, and I think we got a good <laughs> sense of why this guy's so calm in the net. Uh, he's ready for bed almost, but uh, brilliant performance from him and a big win for Seattle. Well, it really was at such a young age to have that kind of composure. After winning a game like that at that age, I would have been doing cartwheels and, and out of breath, but he's just, you know, like another day of the time, and like he said, one puck at a time and you know it's just matter of fact and you know I think you have to have nerves like that to, to play in these kind of games. I agree and you know what we're, we're talking about teenage hockey players and for a kid like Stankowski who's just wrapping up his official 16 year old campaign in the WHL only has just turned 17 recently you're right you're like, you've got to be feeling wired you got to be feeling pumped up but he just okay got it done 
Now we got 13 wins and we're three away from getting a WHL championship. And I like that in any goaltender. I really like that in a rookie goaltender because this is a hostile environment for any goalie coming in on any visiting team, let alone a playoff game, let alone a league championship series opener. Uh, he was everything and more for the Thunderbirds in that blue paint. You know, I think one of the other comments that he made, he talked about the veterans in the room. And, and I think that's a big reason why he is so calm. You know, this team has been there. You look at the playoff experience and the playoff games that this team has, you know, a lot of them with three and four years of playoff experience. I think it rubs off on young guys. Like, those th those veteran guys, they expected to be here. You know what I mean? I think they're a matter of fact, probably business attitude when they showed up here in Regina. Nobody else gets excited because of the young guy. You know, you feed off those older guys. And if the older guys are calm and they have things under control, you know, you, you follow suit. I think that's a, a big reason why Carl Stankowski is able to be as calm as he is. He'll get back to work in about 21 hours' time. Let's get a look at the three stars from tonight's 2-1 overtime victory for the Seattle Thunderbirds on the road in Regina in Game 1 of the championship. Stankowski, the number one star. Austin Wagner, who was terrific for Regina tonight, the second star. And Ethan Bear, who ripped home the regulation time goal. And then the one off the crossbar coming off his stick, another rocket past Tyler Brown, and that led to Donovan Niles putting it in behind Brown in Seattle. A 2-1 victory, a 1-0 series lead on Shaw and Axis. Christmas Day, I'm gonna ask Steffi to marry me, and I'd really like your blessing. <laughs> yeah. No, but just give me a couple days to win you over. By Christmas morning, you're gonna be calling me son. I'm gonna be calling you dad. Don't think that's gonna happen. I think it's gonna, dad. I know it won't. Dad, it will. Stop that. What, dad? That, that, stop that. Dad, what are you talking about? Yes, sir, we bought. Staff, you could be dating anyone. Why, Laird? He makes me really happy. Be a part of the action. Learn new skills, make new friends, and have a backstage pass to local events. Volunteer with Access 7. Check out our volunteer opportunities at myaccess.ca slash access7. Coming soon on Access 7 Sports, Regina Rams, Regina Thunder, Western Major Baseball, the King Golf Boxing Classic. For all of your local sports, tune to Access 7. Hi folks, it's me, Don Taylor, way up here with my friend Murph. At Levitt Machinery, they sell, lease, rent, and service all these machines, and they offer certified training. Need a lift? Stack it, reach it, lift it. Levitt. Tony Romans, serving its signature ribs for 40 years. With an expanded menu including steaks, chicken, and seafood, Tony Romans is a family dining destination. Tony Romans, legendary for ribs, famous for so much more. Well, last year, Seattle went to overtime in game one. It was Brandon that won it. And now it's Seattle, who had lost the first three games in the championship last year in overtime, but they get first blood in the series. It's Donovan Niles with the winning goal. Welcome back to Bob Bale Gloves, WHL Central, alongside Joey Kenward and Jeff Rogers. But now Seattle, Joey, they've got home ice advantage. They do, with this being a 2-3-2 format. They'll play game two tomorrow here at the Brand Center. Then the two teams will fly here from Saskatchewan out to the West Coast and get ready for game three and four on Tuesday and Wednesday night, respectively. You know, looking back at that goal, guys, you're going to give credit to Niles for getting into that dirty area to find the loose change. Uh, you're going to give credit, obviously, to Ethan Bear for getting the point shot that went off the post. But a ton of credit, I think, Jeff, has to go to Matthew Barzell. That was an awkward-looking shot that I think surprised Tyler Brown. It was kind of an awkward blocker stop that he had to make. And that all of a sudden, you know, any shot in overtime can produce something. In this case here, it produces a rebound, loose change, and then eventually a shot, and then a rebound goal at the top of the crease. Uh, that's a, a pretty good, smart heads-up play with fresh ice right off the get-go for Matthew Barzell. Well, it really was. And, and the message going in the overtime, put everything at the net. You know, you, you can't score if you don't shoot. Put it at the net, you never know when you get a lucky bounce. And, you know, touching on Matthew Barzell, who, how good was he tonight? Like, how quick Excellent. are his feet? You know, behind the net, in and out, one-on-one -on -one coverage. He is so hard to stick with. Mind you, he did get burnt a couple times. You know, Sam Steele picked his pocket on the one where he lost an edge, came on a breakaway. You know, the four-on-four -four in the third period had a bit of a turnover for a chance. But, you know, you'll take those 
chances for what he does in a game. His vision, his ability, and his edges, man, that is fun to watch, how he can turn on a dime and lose a defenseman. And the whole time he's got the puck, you get one guy on him, you get two, then you get that third guy creeping in, and he has that ability to have his head up, pick that guy in the high slot that all of a sudden become open because everybody's drawn to him. That's where Matthew Barzal is so effective. He hangs around that puck, draws all the coverage to him, and then distributes it so well. Well, this is the tradition while waiting for uh, the Regina Pats to come out for their postgame uh, comments after tonight's loss. But uh, this is what, what they went through in the last round, Jeff. A game one loss to the Lethbridge Hurricanes. They lost that night 3-1. So they've been down this road before. No, they really have. You know, that game against the Lethbridge Hurricanes, they came out. They got the first goal of the game. You almost thought it was over. And then they sat back. You know, Lethbridge came back, got the three goals, won the game 3-1. You know, this game was a little bit different. I thought Regina played more of a complete game, more of a solid game, and give them credit. You know, we talked about, you know, the hit to Adam Brooks. That's a, a devastating hit for a team to, to rebound from, and I thought the Regina Pats did a nice job gathering themselves together, coming back, making a game of it, and once again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Buziak, Lochner, and Holmes, I think were a big part of it, stepping up and switching their momentum in the third period when it needed to be done. That's a tough way to lose a hockey game, though, when you've just battled back. You get the equalizer in the third period on a power play goal. You get the building into it. Your goaltender makes some big saves down the stretch in regulation to force it to overtime. And then you come out, and before you know it, after the puck is dropped, it's pretty much within a number of seconds in your own net. This is going to be a tough one for the Pats players to put behind them, but they have to find a way to do it. The best thing, I think, for Regina is that there's no point in dwelling on this after the next hour or so. Get a good rest in, get ready for tomorrow, and try to just realize that what's done is done and get ready for game two to try to get this series back on level terms. You know, and I think that's what John Paddock has been so effective at all year is with this team. You know, after the game in Swift Current when they went down three games to one, you know, his message to the team, I watched an interview with Sam Steele, you know, he said John Paddock came in and said, you know what, guys, it's not as bad as it seems. You know, I think he has a calming effect. He believes in this group. And when your coach, your respect, believes in you, you believe in yourselves. And I think he'll send a message that says, you know what, we didn't get the outcome that we wanted. We battled back, took it to overtime, and, and you're exactly right. You know, let's get some sleep. Tomorrow's a new day. The sun will come up, and we'll get ready to go. The big question mark, obviously, for Regina is the status of their team captain. And whatever the status is of Adam Brooks, the last time we saw him, he was leaving the ice, and he did not look in very good shape. So. I'm sure we'll know more maybe from the coach's press conference coming up momentarily and we'll probably know a whole lot more tomorrow. But if he's not back, that's obviously, a, as you mentioned, Jeff, a devastating loss. And it doesn't get any easier whether Brooks is in the lineup or not for Regina because the leading point getter from the Seattle Thunderbirds is poised to return to the visitors roster tomorrow. Keegan Kolasar has served his one game suspension. He has been really the, the go-to guy offensively for the T-Birds so far in these WHL playoffs, and he's going to make that team that much more difficult to play against. And, uh, and Kolsar coming back will give Seattle the depth that Regina had when they started. It gives you two lines that, depending on which line is going, you have to decide you, who you put your number one D against and your number one checking line against when you have those two offensive lines. And, you know, we talked about Adam Brooks going out. Sam Steele, there's no question who they're going to key on tomorrow night. It's going to be the Sam Steele line. And with Cole Sar coming back, it's going to give Seattle that extra offensive threat. Who's got the physical advantage in this series? We've talked about the size with Seattle. Do they have the edge in that regard, Jeff? After game one, I would say yes. No, I, I think they do. I think they came out to prove a point, and, you know, they finished every hit, and, and they, they punished Regina, you know, through the first half of the game. And I think that's something that Regina's going to have to address, and I think Regina has some guys, they're going to have to have a little bit more pushback. You know, you're going to have to step up. Your older guys with more size are going to have to say, you know what, we're not going to get pushed around. We're not going to let you run, especially in our rink, you know, maybe a little bit more in their face. You know, and Regina really hasn't had that through, you know, the Swift Current series, the Lethbridge series. It wasn't really that physically dominating team they play. It was more of a skill speed matchup, and it's a little bit different for them. So it's, you know, game one is all about adjustments to your to your opponent. And you know what? They're against a team that, that likes to play physical, and they're not going to stop. You know, this is the way Seattle's going to play. They played this way all year. So I think Regina probably will make some adjustments and maybe have a little more pushback. Scott Einzer, 
had a strong skating night tonight. So Sammy Morlanen was involved as well. Uh, the depth of Seattle, how much of a trouble is that going to be for Regina in this series? Uh, I think that as this Seattle team moves forward here, particularly those players that were in the same spot last year, that becomes a, a, a bigger factor that is in their favor. Uh, they've got a lot of guys that have seen this movie before. Now, they've also got a lot of players that are getting their first taste of a, a league championship, but that's the one thing that they've got over Regina. These teams are so evenly matched in special teams, in scoring, in depth, but I think that Seattle's depth right now in that experience department. And that's what I expect to happen. No, I don't think it was necessarily that high, but it was a Scott Stevens hit, and that's what I see and believe. I've had a thousand, not thousand, 20 texts from NHL scouts and stuff all over with the same comment. For your guys tomorrow, John, in, in terms of uh, you look like you were a determined team to get pucks to the net. Uh, do you need to see more of that tomorrow night? Well, I think we have. I think we have to be. Um, there's some areas where we didn't play consistent enough in the 60 minutes of doing better plays with the puck and uh, so forth. I, I don't think it, there's nothing, there was no surprise in the game. There's nothing different. I, I think that we have another level to go to. John, what, you talked to the officials. What did you see on the contact on Tyler Brown late in the game? And what explanation did you get? Uh, same as one down at their end. So John Paddock, Connor Hobbs, and Austin Wagner, they are through their media conference. So I was the only one that was able to listen to that. But uh, the question was asked about John Paddock, what he thought of the hit. And he talked about uh, Scott Stevens, uh, famous number four with New Jersey, talking about being in the Hall of Fame for the way he played and the way the game is now. Not sure if he would have gotten to the Hall of Fame, and that's what he thought of the hit, but uh, clearly not happy with what happened to his captain. Well, and one of his top go-to guys offensively uh, into a a time of the year where you need your offensive guys to be healthy, to be on the ice, and it just didn't look good for Adam Brooks when he left the ice early on in period two. It was a hard, heavy collision between Brooks and Turner Ottenbright, and the game at this state, you're the only one on this podium, Jeff, who's played at the high level of hockey. Andy and I, we, we played road hockey. <laughs> um, but, but the game now is as fast as it's ever been, and when you have that element of speed in a contact sport, it sometimes results in circumstances like we saw tonight. Oh, it does. And, and when you, we look at the hit, we had the opportunity to look at it in slow-mo. You know, on break, comes over, makes a hit. Uh, you know, it wasn't late. You know, Brooks had just passed the puck. On break made it. It wasn't late. He had his arm down. He never targeted the head. But his shoulder ended up making contact with Brooks's head. You know, it really does. Here it is. Brooks has the puck, cuts to the middle. Ottenbright, as he's cutting, already has his motion over. He passes the puck. Ottenbright makes the hit, locks his arm, stays down. There's no extension the moment targeting the head, but his shoulder does come in contact with Brooks's head just by the, the hit. The question I have, is it late? Is it a late hit? I don't think it's late. No, if you, you can't even count two elephant, or, you know, one and a half elephant, however you yeah. do it, before Ottenbright makes it. Ottenbright was in the process of making the hit. Brooks comes through the middle, and, you know, we talked about it. it when you know, we played a team a bunch of times, you know yourself when you're on the ice. I knew when I played teams multiple times, you knew who to look out for, and you knew when you stayed out of the middle. And I think that's just a case of, of Brooks maybe not being used to playing against a team that jumps up like that with Ottenbright, or just maybe forgetting for a split second that that pairing's on the ice. And we should mention that when that play occurred in real time, neither referee Jeff Ingram or Regan Vetter put their arm in the air. So it was, uh, Ottenbright was a sense of minor penalty, but it was for an after the whistle uh, infraction. It was offsetting roughing minors, if I'm not mistaken. So there was no penalty on this particular play, but it's certainly a play that's going to garnish a lot of talk uh, into this evening and I'm sure into tomorrow uh, 
especially when we find out any further update on the status of the Regina captain. Well, and Commissioner Ron Robinson here, obviously, and Richard Dirksen, the Vice President of Hockey as well. So they got a first-hand look of the hit. Now, also from that media conference with the Pats, Austin Wagner to talk about things that they needed to do better in Game 2. And one of them, Jeff, was get the puck behind the Seattle D and get on them physically. Well, I think you're exactly right. You know, the Seattle D, they're a big, lanky group. And if you try making plays at the blue line, plays off the rush, they got good gap control, they got good sticks, you're not going to have success. I think Austin Wagner was probably the best at it, probably because he's the fastest guy on the ice. But he'd make that little soft chip behind the D, and, it, you know, you can't hold the guy up. You can't obstruct him from going through. He was able to get to the pucks and, you know, create multiple chances just off that. And I think the rest of the team have to take a page out of that book. You have to find a way to get those soft chips in just behind, out of the reach of Stankowski so he can't play it into the corner when you got speed coming through the middle and create some chances off the cycle. Now that being said, off the cycle is hard enough because they are so big and they are so good defensively that it's going to take a lot of effort and a lot of commitment and you're going to have to pay a price because you're going to get hit every time you're below the goal line. Not like it was for lack of chances tonight for Regina to score. They had a number of golden opportunities, a couple of breakaway chances. Obviously their lone goal came on the power play, but they also had a couple of close looks with other man advantages in this hockey game. I think you chalk this up to pretty good goaltending performance by the visiting puck stopper and as well uh, just a timely start to an overtime period is the two big differences as to why Regina loses this game and as why Seattle has a one nothing series there. I think what you're saying, it was a great hockey game. It was an excellent, <laughs> you know what, it was an excellent way to start a league final. It really was. Yeah. Well, uh, we're waiting to hear from the Seattle Thunderbirds in their post-game uh, comments. After this game one victory, they steal home ice advantage away. Game two is tomorrow night, but Ethan Bear returns. And actually, before we get to that, if we get to that, here they are, the Seattle Thunderbirds, and uh, one of those is Ethan Bear, along with the goal scorer, Donovan Niles, and head coach, Steve Conowalczyk. You have head coach, Steve Conowalczyk, and on your right, you have Ethan Bear. Um, start with you, Donovan. Just walk us through the overtime winning goal. Uh, you saw it develop, and uh, your feeling right after. Um, I just seen Marzi make a good play and uh, took it in in the zone and uh, put a puck to the net, and it came out right to uh, Bears over there, and he, he blasted one, and it hit the bar and came down. I just seen it laying there, so I uh, just poked it in. It was a great feeling. Obviously, you get the first one, so. <clears throat> Steve, after last year's final, how good does it feel to win one of these overtime games? Oh, it feels good. It feels good. It's nice to just change the pattern a little bit. Uh, you know, we have a resilient bunch in our locker room, and uh, you know, you, you like to think that uh, you can overcome a lot, but it's certainly nice to, to get a win here and just kind of, you know, really close out that, that memory of, of last year. The physicality, the intensity, something you guys like to see? You like the way the game was played tonight? Yeah, I thought both teams played hard. I thought they played hard. I thought we played hard. Uh, they finished some checks. We finished some checks. It's, it's, you know, it's a, obviously a pretty important series. Ethan, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so Ethan, just uh, what, your reaction on the goal to the overtime goal since it was your shot that started from the point? Um, you know, we just focused on, uh, you know, getting pucks in the net and dressing room. We talked about it. And, uh, you know, Barzi made a good play just getting it there. And, Unfortunately, it bounced to me, and I took a shot. And uh, as soon as they on the goal line, Donnie knocked it in. And um, you know, to uh, get that first one, and the way we did it, you know, it's uh, you know, it's a really good feeling. We just gotta keep moving forward. I know uh, y you felt you were good to go for this game, but uh, just your thoughts on the way you were able to perform, uh, despite we're, we're guessing you're not 100%. So just the way you were able to perform out there and, and look like yourself, despite what you're dealing with. Um, you know, I felt I felt like I was fine. Uh, you know, it took a couple shifts uh, to get into it, and you know, I think once I got into my groove, you know, I was uh, I was good from there. I was confident. I was shooting, and I thought I was, uh, you know, moving the puck up well. So I'm um, just gonna, gotta keep that going tomorrow. And coach, same question for him to just jump right back at the lineup and just look the way he was. What what are your thoughts on that? Uh, pretty impressive. I mean, uh, you know, he looked like he didn't miss any time. Played a lot of confidence. You could see his confidence building from the start of the game towards the end there, and uh, you know, it, you know he. A real valuable player for us. The physical game, how tough was it and how did you manage not having Keegan Kolasar for game one? Other guys stepped up. I thought uh, Tyler Adams had a big game for us. Wedman had some more minutes for us. Uh, you know, getting getting some different ice time. Donnie Niles goes up on the line with uh, with Barzell, so so he stepped up and ended up getting a big goal for us. Uh, and just uh, other guys trying to trying to help when, when they can. For you, and then maybe for Ethan, you got a lot of kids from the area 
uh, on this team, and you, you don't get to come back that often. So what's it like for those guys in your locker room? Well, I think it's, I mean, they've all got one goal on their mind, but uh, it's an added bonus to be able to come back home for these guys and see their family a little bit and play, play in a rink with a, with a good crowd that uh, I'm sure they all watched uh, growing up and, and wanted to get a chance to play in this building. Ethan, you have a, obviously a, a big contingent. They're saying hundreds of tickets uh, from your group, so it's got to be nice to have that type of support in the building. Yeah, it's uh, no, it's a pretty special feeling. I get a lot of support from my community and and other communities around the area, and um, you know what, it's a good feeling. Um, every time I come around here, they give me some support, and uh, you know what, it's a good feeling um, when you come out here and play. And, you know, it, you know, it's really special. You, you know, just don't take advantage of it. Donovan, where, where does that goal rate in your dub career? What was that? Where does that goal rate in your dub career? That's, that's probably number one. Uh, not, op not too often you get to score uh, an overtime winner in the WHL final. So, yeah, that's probably my top goal. What about the aspect of you basically being a hometown boy here? I know that's not something you probably think about too much, but how about now? Yeah, it was. it's obviously it's fun to come back here and play. So I uh, just got to live in the moment and take it day by day. Steve, for those of us who aren't really familiar with your team, was this a pretty typical T-Bird performance tonight, or what would, you, what would you like to see better? I think uh, at times, <clears throat> at times we were playing the way we like to. Other times, I think a little bit of the time off, few days, some nerves. Uh, there's still some things we need to improve, improve a little bit. Uh, you can see their team has some pushback, and and then we need to get some pushback and you know, really, really try to, you know control a little bit of momentum. It's a good solid game. But there's things things we got to work on. There aren't a lot of mysteries these days with video and everything. Did you see anything uh, that you didn't expect to see from them or is it pretty much as advertised? No, it's pretty much. Uh, again, you can watch as many games as you want uh, and then so you have an idea what they're going to do and and uh, you know that's what we expected. They're a good hockey club over there. Donovan, it would appear that uh, this... Well, one of the neat things Steve Konowalczyk said early on was after three heartbreaking overtime losses last year to the Brandon Wheat Kings, the win tonight in Regina puts to bed the bad memories of the 2016 championship series and the five-game loss to the Wheat Kings. And now the Seattle Thunderbirds have a 1-0 series lead. Donovan Niles, seventh of the playoffs, is the game winner. They take it in overtime, 2-1 over Sam Steele and the Regina Pats. So the third straight series now for the Pats. They go into game two like they did against Swift Current and Lethbridge down 1-0 in the series, but they bounce back in both with a Game 2 victory. And Game 2 comes your way tomorrow night from the Brant Center starting at 7 o'clock Mountain Time, 6 o'clock Pacific with Seattle. A 1-0 series lead in the 2017 championship here in Regina. Peter Lombardius, Kevin Sawyer, Joey Kenward, Darren DuPont, Jeff Rogers, and the crew. I'm Andy Neal. So long from Regina. We'll talk to you again tomorrow night for Game 2 of the championship.